and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode 255 for the week of April 5th, 2016. My name is Ryan Higgins. Who is here with me this week? Brock Sager. Toby. And that's it. Hooray. Yay. 200 on a double nickel. Double nickel? Yeah. Nice. Charlie, see, here's the problem with Charlie. He has a job and kids and family and responsibility. He needs to stop doing that <laughs> and be on this podcast. So, Charlie, if you're listening, which I know you're not, stop it. Bryce is fine. I understand Bryce. I don't care about Bryce. But Charlie, come on. We've missed you, man. You've been so busy recently. Does dwindling down to just you and me again scare wait, you that wait, much? You it miss, does. It totally you, does. You, That's miss, like, you miss him sitting here reading his books? I miss Charlie. See, the thing with Charlie is... He does listen with one ear. He doesn't speak often, but when he speaks... He's it's Silent with, Bob. It's with such authority, and, so, and everything he says he's makes so much sense. He's larger than all of us. Well, it's not just that he's larger than all of us. It's We just ramble incoherently for two and a half hours, and Charlie is silent, but when he speaks, it is worth listening to. He puts his foot down. He, he does. speaks in volumes, omnibus size. He does. Toby. Yeah, yeah. Missed you last week. Yes. You were at... No, no, no! Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm, I'm still ahead against you know Hispanic food. It's like I still think I'm in oh. the hundreds versus the two times they beat me. Well, I was not going to talk about your your oh your, well, your, your not your, my bowel movements your food issues last week. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Before before we get into what Toby's, um, I want to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, you yay. Just thank you. Your, your birthday. I am so well, and my my birthday was over the weekend. But thank you. You're very only much, 49 bro. years old. Uh, Old I man. only feel 60. You only <laughs> feel as old as you look, and now, I now, feel like a million years now, old. Now, did anybody come in yesterday, because I was out sick, but did anybody come in yesterday and go, how long have you opened the store? Or are these comic? These are old comics, and they're from the Well, there's guys. another birthday. That always happens. There's another birthday. Well, I, if you're talking about the store? Yeah. I was, well, I, I thought that's what he was segueing well, into. Well, no, that's what, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's everything. Yeah, so. so there's two birthdays. If, if I have not mentioned this prior, a lot has happened Oh, I thought that said Nintendo. What does that say? Narito? I don't know what that says. Some car just drove by. I thought it said Nintendo. If it was a Nintendo car, I would, uh, I would stop the podcast right, yeah. and just go. No, you um, wouldn't. you just go. Well, I would stop the podcast first and then go. Uh, so I was born April 3rd. Uh, the comic store, to the best of my knowledge, was open on April 1st. I don't have a specific date. The uh, I think I think it's a gag. No, I, I well, it was open in April sometimes, what I was told. I, ne- I never knew the specific date. I've actually tried to look it up. I, I looked up, like, county records for, like, registration, like, trademark registration and everything. That's but when was... you realized you actually don't own the store? But it, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> but it was, like, way later. Um, so I don't know what the specific opening date. But the, the date I was always told was April of, of 1993. So, yeah, we have, we uh, just passed our 23rd anniversary Yay. of the store Yay. existing. Uh, and I started here April of 1997, which is Yay. 19 years ago. Yay. So next year we have a giant party. Uh, 20 year anniversary for well, Ryan my, Higgins. My 20th, and the store's 20. Plus, you're 20th. only 60 at that point. Yeah, yeah. And the store's 24th. So, uh, yeah, tw- uh, 2018, we'll do something nice because that'll be the store's 25th anniversary. So, nice. I definitely want to try to do something. I came back in April. You won't or be I alive. Came into the but store in April. Was it April? Yeah. Is that when you started? Yeah. It was something like, about April. Like, yeah. I came mm-hmm. in, I walked in. Hey, that's my wife. What? Sorry. If you're listening to the Geek Box, you've heard that oh. a thousand times. Oh. No. <laughs> I, uh, I just got it. I'm slow. No, when I when I I was working over at a special uh, yeah sc- ed school over here, and I came over to the shop because I was like, oh, I wanted to check out comics, and I hadn't seen you in a while, and didn't expect to see you. And I walk in, you're standing behind the counter, and I specifically, oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know what I that spe- was. Sorry, <laughs> I specifically said to you. You still work here? <sighs> and your response to me was, bitch, I own the place. Yep, yep, yep. And I think you had owned it for about a year? Because you've owned it for, what, 10 years now? Uh, Has it been that long? No, uh, eight. It was October 2000. No, uh, yeah, no, wait, it, wait, it's wait, almost wait. 10. No, yeah, October 2006. That means yeah. I've been working or not working here for over 10 years now? Yeah, you're like almost 11 years. Oh, uh, what? Because you were I'm... here for about a year before I bought it, right? Maybe or six two. months. Was it two? I thought it was like two years before. I remember when the whole plan started with you buying over, and yeah. I was very much on board for that. Oh, wow, maybe it was too. So yeah, you're yeah. You're, you're past ten years at this point. Brock's almost I'm ten almost years. At 10 years yeah. And I spent ten years at the previous comic book stores. Right. That means I've been working at a comic book store for over twenty years. Yeah, because we started. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those fat comic book shop guys <laughs> no, at this me. point. That's me. Uh, over twenty years in the comic book industry, man. For me. Well, and when you've you, been just at the same place. When did you start at Legends? Because I started in ninety seven. Seventeen. 
97. Yeah. So the same year? Yeah. There you go. Oh, shit. Yeah. Crazy times. Could you imagine if I actually taken over Legend, would it be like competitors? We'd be rivals, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fuck you, Ryan Higgins. Wait, isn't That's that fine. isn't that normally how it goes? I am actually friends with a good chunk of the store owners in this area, or fr- friends or friendly. There's a couple I'm well, not. Well, you'd be but... a friend of me for sure. <laughs> Even more than we already are. Yes. Well, yes. Lots to celebrate this week. So let's Ooh. get on with uh, our various topics because we've got a lot to discuss. Well, this happy week. anniversary and happy birthday thank, and thank happy. You. Anniversary of working owning. Thank you. Here, almost October is the anniversary though. Oh, buying okay. it. So almost ten years. Yay! That'll be God. It really is one of those where yeah, did any time time yeah, go. because I still remember when it happened. Yeah, like that's crazy. I was having Brock do some. Me and Brock were doing some. Well, I was having Brock do it, and I was helping some various moving around of the store. It's that it's been yeah. eighteen months. My yeah. brain's starting to twitch. I have to move stuff around yeah. again, <laughs> and. uh I was like, yeah, did we? I like, I remember when there was like bookcases over here, and I'm like, oh, that was like 12 years ago, oh. and it feels like it was like it just happened. Well, I yeah. think it was was it last week we I was talking to you, and I was like, you realize you've been putting up with me on Mondays and Tuesdays for like nine years, and you just like shook your yeah, head, you put your head down, you're like, it's so bad, God, I can't, because I remember after you first bought the store and just trying to get everything back together, because I I used to not come in here because it was such a like dungeon nasty place, yeah. And then when I came in, um, it was like you had you had made it look nicer. There's still shit hanging from the ceiling, but yeah, it had those bookcases that was like I, everywhere. I don't know. You know, when you're not the owner of the store, there's only so much you can do. Toby, I'm sure you understand this yeah, very well. That's right? why I fight you all the time <laughs> to the death, <laughs> to the death. But yeah, I definitely. Then, then you tell me to go home, and I get more angry because you can. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's you know. It's you know what's scary is I don't think none of us changed except for we all got fatter and older. Oh, that yeah, no. The we store did. got nicer, but us got older and fatter. If only we aged the opposite way. Yeah, I mean, there are days where I'm like, I feel like I'm a kid, and there are days where I'm like, oh my god, I feel like <laughs> I'm the oldest person on earth. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's all fun though, Toby. Yeah. The, the the let's say the real reason you were not here last week, not the reason we don't want to hear about. The reason we actually want to hear about is because you were recovering from not food poisoning, but WonderCon. It really was food poisoning, though. but it was also WonderCon. Let's stick with WonderCon. Right, WonderCon. Right. Let's, right, let's, let's, let's talk about WonderCon. You I don't know, want to hear about food poisoning. You know, it's funny that we just brought up age because at WonderCon, for once, I actually started feeling kind of one of the older guys. I'm like, yeah. oh no! I'm like, when I was on the bus, right, because uh, me and Lane stayed a little further away. I was like, I was on the bus. I'm like, there's still the the, the next generation is still kind of there, right? But I was like, in front of me, there's a bunch of like, you know, twenty year olds being really excited about. I'm like, that used to be me, but I'm not no longer part of that that age group anymore. And I was like, what is happening to me? Oh no, oh no! Because I, I, I don't think I went to WonderCon the very first year I moved here. I, I mean, I, I actually I know for yeah. a fact I didn't. But I, I want to say like ninety four, maybe ninety five. I started going. Yeah, yeah. And they moved in two thousand. It's been 11? a few now. Yeah, it's been like five years now. I think. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think I missed one. I missed. I think I missed the very first year. It was in San Francisco. Okay. Uh, and I used to not go, even though it was like in the backyard. But I went to but, almost. Yeah. yeah, I went to almost every oh, other one. Yeah, wow. yeah. I mean, I, yeah, there may have been one yeah, other year I missed randomly. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I went to nearly every single one. I mean, I always um, liked it here in the city because it was kind of like my chill con. It was in the backyard, and you know. I it, had no no missions, right? It's I would just go so chill. big now. Yeah, that's uh, you know, mini mini San Diego. I mean, it's the same people to run it, yeah. Yeah. So, um, no, I mean, I went kind of more as a test run for San Diego with my bum foot, and let me tell you, I will never ever do a con <sighs> on sticks ever again. Uh, the, those disabled lines are meant for people that are in, in wheelchairs. Not for a guy that still has to stand. That doesn't work. And especially since they expect you to sit on the floor. I'm like, yeah, once I sit on the floor, I can't get back up. Uh, so it's it, it doesn't quite work that way. So it was a, it was is, a very interesting con. Is San Diego not going to happen then? Uh, I don't. Well, I'm projected to walk again before then. So yeah. hopefully. Well, we'll when, see. When is... But, when is Hotel Apocalypse? Is that was that today? today. It, that was oh, today. did it already happen? That was today. Oh, yeah. how'd it go? I have no idea. Did you, did you even try? I, it? I, 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 I should have tried because I wanted to get something closer, but I got something through uh, some of the artists. Oh. So I do have something in the pipeline, so I'm good. Um, 
But no, uh, I went to uh, WonderCon basically as a test run. I kind of wanted to see what the RFID thing is about because that was a new thing they were testing out before San Diego. They have it here at um, uh, Silicon Valley too. Yeah, I'm not so sure I like it. A lot of people early on were complaining about when they turned off that they have to like go all the way back to uh, registration to get it fixed. And so luckily that never happened to me. Uh, I on purposely, I was kind of mean. I on purposely didn't check out on one place to see if I could check into the next place. I just wanted to see. It was kind of a test. Um, it's kind of weird. I, I don't know what to think of it. I don't know why they're tracking it. If it's just to get in, that's that's acceptable because, you know, there's bootleg badges, whatever. So I, I totally am on board for that. Um, but, yeah, if they're tracking you to see what you're doing at the con, I feel that's kind of a little weird. Um, I'm sure for the most part it's just... Just, do, just I, to get bootleggers away, maybe? That and we don't have to have a person standing there. Well, but then they stand there to make sure you badge in anyways. But I think one person can do that. Oh, They usually will have multiple people. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, you know, other than that, um, I had some really interesting conversations with a couple artists. Uh, Philip Tan, who's we're going to talk about real soon what project he's on. Uh, you know, and Dustin and so on. Um, what I really uh, thought, found interesting was the amount of uh, girl cosplaying as either Ray, Scarlet Witch from Ultron, the movie, or um, what's a, or, or Agent Carter. So for those twenty-something-year-old nerds out there. Be happy that, you know, all this stuff is so cool that all these girls are coming. Because 20 years ago, 10 years ago, none of this shit was happening. Well, I feel like Ray, Agent Carter, and the the movie Scarlet Witch, those are very acceptable and rudder maybe easily. I, I don't want to say easy. Yeah, I don't want to say that either. That's but why I slowed down there. They are real clothes. Yeah, They're yeah. not a costume, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scar- the comic Scarlet Witch, she's got this fucking Yeah, no, not of that. No, it was, it was all the movie one. But it was a ton of them, though. A ton. Like, everywhere I looked, I'm like, there's two, three of them. Okay. So I thought yeah. that was really cool, actually. Yeah. Uh, there was a really cool uh, BB-8 girl. Uh, you probably oh, saw some Instagram I, pictures of I, it. I, so, so I saw her everywhere. Oh, uh, she was... She was cool. I mean, I don't know if she knew what was really going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she get overnight sensation, right? Yeah, she's, yeah, yeah. she's phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, there was a really cool uh, uh, Thanos that was really cool from those um, uh, cinema makeup school guys. Oh, cool. Yeah, that did, you know, some other really cool stuff in yeah. the years before. Um, you know, I got to all the panels I wanted to. I went to some of the TV stuff, uh, Orphan Black, of course. Mm. And, you know, a lot of them were fun. Uh, it's the first time I've seen Greg, Greg, Greg Clark. Oh, yeah. Kind of speak to public. Okay. And that dude has got a lot of charisma. Does it? Oh man, he's. I've seen like, like I've seen interviews with him. So yeah. uh, so Colson, right? Like Colson, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I I always thought he was a little. Dog. I didn't realize he was a comedian. Uh, he handles the crowd really well, nice. and he's kind of like like Nathan Philly in ways. He does really well with the nerd crowd. I feel yeah, like. yeah, yeah. So that was really cool to see that in action. So yeah, yeah overall, really cool con and. You know, I, I um one of the the things I really wanted to go to was the uh, DC Rebirth announcement. Mm-hmm. But you know, I wish you had told me. Yeah, but you, you know, actually went because I could have got you in. Yeah, you know, you only like let your other friends in, but the people that actually report back, you know, you're like the. So <laughs> you went. So we went to go see uh, Batman vs Superman. Yes, and you're like, I don't know my leg. I don't know. I don't know yeah. if I'm going. And then the next day, you just went. I never heard from you till Monday, <laughs> and I'm like, where the no, hell is no, Toby? You're wrong. You're wrong. I was or, texting you on Saturday oh, morning af- first after, thing after the after no, the it was panel. during. It was during. But after I could, I, if yeah, you yeah. had let me know Friday night, I could have got you in. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, I didn't know you could get me in. Well, frankly, I didn't know it was a private thing, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I they didn't really make I, that very clear. Yeah, I thought I could just walk in. I was trying to find it. I couldn't find it. And then yeah. that's when I texted you. Uh, it's really funny, though, because I was like, that's one of like the things I want to do. And I report back on it. And I was like, wait, where the fuck is this shit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they didn't make that clear that that was a, uh, an invite-only press and, <clears throat> and retailer-only. Yeah. Because yeah. ma- they made it sound like you could just go to yeah, it. Yeah, and that's what I thought. And I, yeah. I even told Lane, I'm like, you know, let's get there. And that's all I want to do. Now, frankly... I really didn't know myself how I was going, right? So yeah. we watched Batman Superman Thursday night. We got like out at 1 o'clock. Lane was talking about leaving at 4 in the morning to get down to the con. I'm oh. like, Lane, if you're leaving in a couple hours, obviously I'm not. that's not happening oh, for me. On. That was the old man ugh, right there. Oh, even if I was a kid, 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> no, isn't happening. Two hours later after BBS, that's a little hard. Yeah. But I told him, hey, man, if you miss that window, you know, and you want to wait till I'm done with work because I do get up early. I'll go. So that's kind of what happened. Just so, skip Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, I I didn't want to miss work, so yeah, we just went. It was really a 
hey, he missed his window. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. might as well wait for me because you're going to miss out on Friday anyways. Yeah. So I'll go too. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how it was. But Rebirth. Yeah. Well, any, any last uh, any last um, notes of WonderCon? Anything huh? too special? No. Nah. It's WonderCon. It's WonderCon. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I did my usual. You know, uh, I had dinner with Lord. We had, uh, you know, dinner with some, some of the other artists, Ali people yeah got some behind the scenes stories which are really interesting and yeah. really cool to hear uh you know I, when we were done i ran into humberto ramos oh cool uh, you know he, he was there he asked me about my leg he asked i actually asked quite a few questions nice. uh you know and and as i walked in on, on saturday first thing i walked by the dc booth and that's r- right when you texted me i was like hey philip tan is on suicide squad and i'm like there's philip tan <laughs> signing i'm Sitting like right what's up philip and he goes Toby, come chat. I was right. like, sweet. So you know, I chatted with him for a few, and he's he's really excited for this project. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about we'll we'll get to him in a bit. So, uh, did you get Brock? Did you get a chance to go through other rebirth teams no, or anything? I didn't, I didn't get a chance to. So I'm 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 new. So I'll be like, oh my gosh. Well, you're gonna hear all about it right now. Uh, a lot of people are asking Wait, about is rebirth. Is this a list? It's a very long list. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Ryan's list. He loves this list. Yeah, this is Bra- true. Bryce, Bryce is super excited for me. This list. Um, uh, yeah, take, I bet Toby he is. <laughs> Toby, I was going to say for people that are interested, um, we do want to hear your takes on Batman vs Superman. I know if you survived the nearly three hour podcast <laughs> last week, so, you're probably so, so sick of Batman vs Superman. So, now we did what two hours forty minutes, right? Last yeah. week, you know, a little longer in the movie or as the movie. <laughs> You know, and we're five people last week, so that means I get thirty-three minutes or thirty-two minutes, yeah, sure. right? Tonight, like on my own, without interruption, <sighs> right? We'll, right? We'll, we'll we'll do what we right? can do. We'll do what we can do. It's only fair. Maybe I can maybe I can throw some updates of uh of uh box we'll office more drop lists off. and some more box lists, office. more yeah. numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So let's go. DC Rebirth starts in the very last week of May. Mm-hmm. Uh, pre-order at comicsconspiracy.biz right now for the very first uh, month. Uh, and and this is uh, DC has all all new titles coming out. We actually are very nearing the end of Marvel's all new, all different number ones. There there's only yeah. a, a couple left. I, I, I will probably end up waiting to the last batch ships through May, and then do one last episode of all the the because mo- there's been like six or seven number yeah, ones. They're still in launch here. Yeah, there's there's still launch months. Yeah, it's Just... it's it's about a nine month window or about a six month window. Wow. No man, maybe almost nine months. Yeah, they're still coming out with number one. Yeah, because number ones weren't, weren't those coming out in December? Uh, I mean, uh, who's August. Who's, or, who's, no, or September, October is when they started. Was that when the number Iron was? Man? Yeah. Who's writing no. the uh, Black oh, Panther Man that's started. coming out tomorrow? What's that? Who's writing the Black Panther that's coming out tomorrow? I cannot pronounce the okay. guy's name. He he's a uh, he's a journalist. This is his first comic. So really, yep. Let me. I can pronounce the guy's name if you give me one second. That'd be a Patreon uh, backer tier for Ryan just to name name. I'm kidding. Just to pronounce. It's names. probably worse uh, if I do it. It's probably a lot worse. Way worse. Tanahishi Coates is his huh. name. Yeah, uh, he's a writer for the. Uh, I want to say the Atlantic. Huh. Um, yeah, I mean, I I know the guy's name. I'm, I'm I don't yeah, know yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of journalists. Cool. I mean, if they're not, if it's not comic book journalism, I don't know anything about or it. Or gaming, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a writer for the Atlantic, yeah, uh, and he's got some memoirs and he's done some books and stuff. Mm. So, but uh, yeah, new comics, which is very cool. Uh, so, DC Rebirth starts in the last week of May, but the majority of these books come in June. So, uh, at WonderCon, they had the full announcement, and we live streamed the event here, and a lot of other stories did too. Of uh, all the Were creators, you open at the time, uh, I opened. Yeah, I had. Isn't like at nine in the morning? Yeah, I had a couple, couple of our customers came by. Oh, well, yeah, cool. How was that live streaming? Good. Uh, it was awesome. I really hope DC and Marvel and other companies do more of this stuff. WonderCon and Comic Con and all that just live stream those panels because yeah. I pay fifty bucks a year for BlizzCon. I don't go. I mm-hmm. do the live stream. I watch the panels. They make fifty bucks a year off me every year. I'd pay a hundred bucks to live stream all of Comic Con or two hundred bucks. Yeah. Sure, why not? Well, it's, it, it it's, saves you standing all those fucking lines. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's also, I mean, it's basically just like paying for a fight. Right, I mean, you're you're paying the the thing to stream it. People can come, they can watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what you should do though on the ceiling? I, I you would should get one of those those screens, and you should just project project the, the entire thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so fucking badass. <laughs> Bunch of nerds talking. So speaking of nerds <laughs> talking, we li- we listened to some nerds talk for a while about the creative teams uh, that DC is going to have. Now, some of these uh, maybe bigger than others. There was a lot of talk. Prior, uh, a lot of rumors that even the day of DC was still kind of the paint was the, uh, the ink was drying in a few of these contracts. So yeah, uh, I think there was maybe some 
struggle to, to fill a few of these books. And I, I assume some of these books will drop off or go down the once a month and yeah. other books will come in. And I wish I could talk about the, the you heard could have been the could have been. Oh man, I wish stories. I could talk about. It. They're so well. Personally, I really wish those books were in existence. Well, and here's the thing: there's they always could come al- later. There's always other books. Right? Yeah, yeah, and they can come later. I mean, the ideas were there. Yeah, but holy yeah. moly! So let's start with Superman. Now, all the rumor for Superman is that uh, the new Fifty Two version of Superman that we've seen going around might not be around past mm-hmm. May because everything they show is the uh, Lois and Clark yeah. pre-Flashpoint Superman who's Uncle, been running Uncle around. classic Superman. Right. So I'm very curious what exactly is going to happen to that New 52 version. A very major character dies in the Countdown comic. Very well could be him. DC's way of sort of saying, hey, uh, oops, yeah. this take didn't really work. Let's give you back the classic guy, but with some changes, yeah. which is the point of Rebirth. So starting with Action Comics, written by Dan Jorgens, who... Dan Jurgens, mm-hmm. Death of Superman, mm-hmm. old guy, mm-hmm. old, old, older guy, but but he may have the classic thing down way more than some of his newer guys. Lois and Clark, the book that's out right now, yeah. is secretly the best. Yeah, Superman really? book has oh, been. It's, it's, it's been it's, since you started. It's awesome. Well, that's yeah. good. That's good to hear. Superman married to Lois, mm-hmm. hidden on Earth. Is that Jurgens also? Yeah, that's oh, Dan okay. Jurgens. Yeah. Uh, and they introduce um, Jonathan, his son, mm-hmm. that that, uh, that he has at the very end of Rebirth. Yeah. So, uh, and that is going to be a part of this title. Um, and drawn by Superboy. New uh, Superboy. We'll get to that. Uh, drawn by Patrick Zerker, Tyler Kirkham, and Stefan Segovia. Ooh, Tyler Kirkham. Yep. And so that's going to be twice a month because yeah. a lot of these books are shipping twice a month. Well, yeah. and, and Patrick Zerker, he's uh, he's kind of dark. He's a good artist. He's good. I like his, good. his stuff's really good. I really. Yeah. He's got a lot of um. He's a lot of like thick. Mm-hmm. Like thick black lines, yeah. Thick but black, I mean, uh, most eight. of most of his stuff. I mean, he did. A, That's the guy I'm thinking of. He did a, 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 a issue or two of Flash when uh, it was the uh, what was it? It was that it was that weird ghost killer. Yeah, yeah. During the I, new think 52. I think I'm thinking of the right artist. And uh, and uh, well, he was doing he was doing Suicide Squad too. Yeah, for a little while. Um, but his stuff's very like I enjoy his artwork. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, following up that, we have Superman, written by Peter Tomasi, Patrick Leeson, and uh, Doug Monkey. And that's one of my favorite creative teams. Peter Tomasi and Doug Monkey did some amazing work on uh, Batman and Robin, and uh, oh, yeah. I love Peter Tomasi. So that also ships twice a month, starting in June. Uh, new- Batman? What's that? That was Batman? No, that was, uh, was Superman. Superman. Oh, man, though. Superman. Yeah. yeah. No. No? Man, Superman. Oh, just Superman. Just regular. Just, just so because low. there's a Superman. Like, I can't say it properly. The uh, e-book, Superman. isn't it? There's New Superman, which is the new book by Jin Yang, drawn by Victor um, um, Bog, uh, Bogdanovic. Is that the Can Chinese I... Superman? Yeah, that's the Chinese Superman. So yeah. this is a new character that's going to be introduced. I think he actually may have got introduced this week. Ah. Uh, and this is uh, Jin Yang, who was doing Superman. He's going to go over and do this new character. I believe that's only once a month. He's one hell of an independent writer. Like I haven't read any of the the, the DC stuff he's done yep. because he's been on Superman for a while. Which mm-hmm. Yeah, about a I year, didn't I realize it was, it was already happening. But all his independent stuff was well, amazing. Very stuff. first trade came out this week. Oh, did it really? Yep. Yep. Uh, I already bought a pile from me <laughs> for it, man. <laughs> uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, this was a lot of rumor on who was going to do this, but uh, Greg Rucka coming yeah. back to the Wonder Woman nice. with uh, dual stories, one by Liam Sharp on, I believe, the even numbered issues. I'm uh, sorry, the odd numbered issues, so one, three, five, and seven. And Nicola Scott, who's done uh, Earth Two and, Earth two, yeah. and amazing, wait, wait, so there's artist. two different stories. Yeah, so Nicola Scott is going to be on issues two, four, six, and eight. I, be- I believe that's correct, and she's doing a year one Wonder Woman story. So is it two completely different stories, or is it interwoven? Two completely stories, but the book is also twice a month. So, so if you only care for one, do you just like buy, buy half the books? You can buy issues one, three, five, and seven really? if you just want Liam Sharp. Yeah, really? Yeah, That's yeah, sure. So I mean, weird. I'm sure there is some connective tissue that runs yeah. through okay, okay. them, but because it is otherwise it's kind of a throwback to when you know in the mid '90s, early '90s, when Superman was like going through all the books, and he kind of just followed the Superman symbol numbers. Speaking of the symbol, yeah, they're back. Really? Symbols back yep. today because <laughs> they're doing a Superman crossover. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm Liam Sharp. I don't know if you guys seen this guy. He is incredible. He's got like that sort of sort of Frank Frazetta, like real oh, okay. super detailed. Okay. So very very excited to see what him do that. What has he done? So I'm gonna um, be fucking stuff. broke when these books come out. Uh oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah <laughs> He's gonna like, be oh yeah yeah yeah. Give me your money, Toby. Yeah yeah. There's gonna be a lot of different stuff that he's working on. Um, 
Liam Sharp. I want to say he worked on some 2000 AD. Uh, yeah, because he did 2000 AD to Judge Dredd. Oh, Judge Dredd. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, he's done various work for, for Marvel back in the 90s. He did some work for uh, Verotic, the um, Frank Pizzetta's comic company. and so okay. Yeah, but he hasn't done a lot. And, I mean, uh, I can't say that. I want to say he's done more stuff recently, but he hasn't done a lot. Okay. So, uh, good to see him back doing some work. Supergirl by Steve Orlando and Brian Ching. Uh, well, Steve Orlando should be a, an interesting an interesting mix for that. He's on Midnighter right now. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, Midnighter. Yeah, sorry, I was, I was looking at Marsha Midnighter. Are, they, um, she's the are they Midnighter. changing her up again so she's less angry? Uh, she looks exactly like Cara Danvers Perfect. in the Supergirl show. Perfect. Yep, I think that's yep. very smart. It's, I think that's exactly what they should do. They said it's not going to be anything like the show. Oh. It's going to be set in uh, in space with Legion. No, no, no. It is going. It is going to be set. In uh, the Flash's universe, no. What the hell is the city she's in in the show? What's it called? National oh, City. National City. And Cat Grant is one of the supporting cast, but it's nothing like the show. Oh sure. Yeah. yeah. It's like okay, okay, sure. DC. Okay. No, please make it like the show. The show is so good. Yeah. Well, well. Oh. Well, Did you watch the Flash crossover? No, because it's so fucking hard to watch CBS shows when you don't have TV. I really just, good. I just randomly watched it. I was like, it's really good. It was really good. Trinity. Well, the show itself, I don't know. Which, Trinity, I know this is going to be one of your favorite books. Yeah. Uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman team-up book written and drawn by Francis Manipool. So, oh, oh, that's nice. Yeah, really looking for that. With additional art the by Clay. Got some good vibe on books. Yeah, like, Clay, man. Just, 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 as, just as the flowage is really dope. Yeah. Now, well, that, I mean, book's, that book starts in September. Remember, oh, not all these but books. But is he writing and drawing? How yeah, long yeah. is he yeah. going to last yeah. on that, though? I don't know. He's gonna Arms gonna fall well, the thing off is, is I mean, six. I mean, we we I think he really came in, uh, in in into the limelight with his run on Flash. He did a really really good yeah, job on that. No, he came on the limelight during the Aspen books, I believe. Well, no, I, that's like, for DC. For DC, Flash was his sure. Flash was his big one, and then yeah. when he <sighs> transferred over to drawing for Detective, a lot of people, like even myself, were a little skeptical because we were so used to his kind of lighter tone nah, with I the colors and all that dope. stuff. What was Manipool's Aspen book? Oh, I'm I want to say it's it. Aspen. Of course, now that I said it, I'm probably going to be wrong. And everybody's going to be like, fuck, you don't know what you're talking about, Toby. Oh. Uh, no, like, his detective run was he, But his detective run solid. turned out really, really amazing. So, I mean, his range from being more of a light character, yeah. like Splash, to a more darker character like Batman. Yeah, I mean, I think oh, it's... No. Witchblade was his, oh, yeah, yeah. Was his oh, big was? thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm yeah. close. Yeah, top cow. I was close. Sort of where he got his his big boost. No, I'm very excited for uh for his art's real good. It yeah. works for some books and uh, a, a team up book sounds sounds Wait, great. Didn't he have that one Aspen book where um it was like this really big character with this girl with like uh it was like a really big bulky character with this shit man. It's gonna bug me. All right, move oh, you're on. You're talking about Iron like, the Iron, iron something Iron maiden? something yeah Iron, iron Maiden yeah. Uh, Iron Saint. Iron, iron, no, not Iron, iron Saint. Maiden? Iron and Maiden. It was Iron and the Fuck, Maiden. This is oh come. no, but they changed. No, it, it's called the Iron Saint because they, it was Iron and the Maiden, but they yeah. changed the name of it to the Iron Saint. Oh, that's where I yeah, really okay. remember Manipul yeah. from. Yeah. But, but yep. yeah, which yep. believe before that, but yep. yep, yeah, that's it. I liked Iron and the Maiden. Uh, Superwoman. It's a new character. We don't know who it is. May or may not be Lois Lane. Is it the uh, the the electric Superwoman from like the late nineties, no, early two no, thousand? No. Written and drawn by Phil Jimenez, uh, Emmanuel Lapacino doing additional art for that series. Cool. So uh, that's monthly starting in August. So again, like I said, these aren't all starting in June. Yeah. Some of these yeah, are yeah, starting yeah. Uh, later. Uh, let's hit some Batman titles because, of course, the big one, the mother. That you called. My boy Tom King yeah. taking over Batman. Yeah. Are by David Finch and uh, Michael Jannon. And you that's... Know, it's too bad that this nerd stuff is not like stuff at Vegas where we could bet on <laughs> because Ryan Higgins would be rich right now. <laughs> uh, that's twice a month, uh, twice a month starting in June. And I, man, if you are not reading Vision, if you are not reading Omega Men, if you are not reading Grace, stop whatever you're doing. Go to your store, go to our digital site. You, Vision is the best comic. I mean, Marvel's putting out hands down. It is one of the best comics being published right now, mm. period. Yep. Vision is such an incredible... You probably hate it, Toby. It's really depressing. Yeah. Vision is such an incredible book. And those other two well, were really good as well. I, I haven't made it past number one, but yeah, I'll continue reading it. Though. And the thing is, is like his his Omega Man is completely different than the Vision. Yeah, and Grayson and is completely Grayson different. Is but completely yeah, different. I love, I love, love, love Grayson. Well, Grayson, too. I mean, he's co-writing now with uh, Tim Seeley, and, yeah. and he's got some... He's a good, good writer, so... 
You I'm know, kidding. somewhere right now, Bri- uh, Bryce is crying because he just said <laughs> that. He's like, oh, he does love me. Yeah. Oh, I should say Detective Comics is returning to its original numbering. Yes, as action well, and so. detective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. So Detective, which is uh, the next one here, uh, written by James Tiny, Tiny, I believe it's Tinyan. I believe that's how it's pronounced, the fourth, with Eddie Barrows and um, Alvaro Martinez. I don't know him. Uh, but that's twice a month starting in June. Probably what will end up being one of the biggest books out of all of this is uh, a new all-star Batman title. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, when I heard this, I everyone laughed because they were looking at Jim Lee, and they're like, huh? <laughs> like, what are you doing, right? But uh, this is actually by Scott Snyder. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a monthly book. And every issue uh, – well, you know, actually, this is twice monthly, but I thought it was monthly. Uh, they got some big art on there, didn't they? Every issue, I believe, is done by – there may is there I, I it's I'm not sure if there's multiple stories or if there's one each issue is one like kind of st- standalone story. I don't know. But he's no getting more. he's getting uh, some of his buddies, so Jock, Sean Murphy, a few other a few yeah. other guys he's worked with. Uh, Jarmina Junior is doing one of the main arcs. Uh, yeah. But uh, I have to say though, and I, I, I always disliked his art, but his Batman image that he posted actually works because half the face is covered, covered so yeah. you don't see all the lines he usually does on the faces. I'm so. fine with if he wants to do some throwback Silver Age story. And using Ramita Jr., cool, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I just don't so think... So is this going to be like an anthology book, Yeah, you yeah, think? yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a story about all the villains, right? Ah. So each, I believe each issue is sort of like a, a different that could be villain's cool, kind of perspective, yeah. be right? Cool, though. It could yeah. be like that Arkham book that Morrison wrote back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nightwing. Talk hey. about talk about Nightwing. Uh, Tim Seeley is writing that uh, with uh, Javi Fernandez and Marcus Toe. Marcus Toe has done some yeah, that's stuff. Yeah, that's an Aspen that's guy. That's an Aspen guy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's an Aspen guy. So that starts in July. And He's Nightwing. Really clean cut. He's actually a little more stylish than the current artist, but, you know, similar. Like, yeah. clean lines. Yeah. And Toby yes. must be your most looking, your most anticipated title. Yes. Because Jeff Johns agrees. Yes. Nightwing back in blue. Yes. The way it was always meant to be. Yes. Yeah. Screw away to all that weird red garbage in the 52. <laughs> that was not the real Nightwing. I mean, I like his red costume, but, no! Night- but Nightwing is blue. <laughs> yes. Nightwing is blue. Yes, as he should be. I'm very, very happy. Yep. I'll, I'll buy at least two, maybe five copies. <laughs> oh, there's going to be variants for all these? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you're, you're doomed. Uh, Batgirl, written by Hope Larson. Uh, Raphael Albuquerque doing the art on that, who's an uh, well, absolutely great artist, mm-hmm. one of my favorites. Uh, that's monthly no, in July. Hope Larson, what has she worked on? She's done a lot of independent work. She's done books for Oni. Wait, is she doing Oni? Faith right now? Um, I don't think so. Um, but I can check. I'm not sure who's doing it. Uh, you're talking about the... Um, the Valiant The Faith. Valiant book? Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure who's writing that run right now. Uh, but this is her first kind of like major superhero uh, uh, comic, and you know we've talked a few times Do, about. Uh, is the costume no longer hipster? It's it's, it's uh, the costume is actually fine. It's a perfectly fine costume. It's just not what I like. <laughs> uh, yeah, she did a handful of graphic novels here. Um, yeah, she, couple, couple works for for Oni. Uh, but yeah, I mean she's, no, okay. she doesn't. I mean, the superhero stuff is not her her okay. normal um, uh, line of book. So uh, I know. Especially here, everyone on the podcast, I'm not the biggest fan of what they're doing right now in the current comics. Uh, this feels like it hopefully splits that difference. Uh-huh. It's a little more traditional because she's going to be like going around Asia trying to learn and like kind of find herself and and become better at at martial arts uh-huh. and everything. So uh, I'm 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 pretty excited for that. So this is Batgirl begins basically. Uh, Batman begins again. Batgirl begins again. Speaking of Batgirl again, we have Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. Written by Julie Benson and Shauna Benson. Julie uh, Benson? Uh, no, this from is... Dexter? No, 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 no. These are two of the writers from, from The 100, the show on CW. Ha, dude, 100 is so fucking cool. I've heard really good things oh about it. Oh, my God. I heard dude. it starts off a little crappy, but it, it gets yeah, oh, but it gets real good. I actually went to the panel. I was like, with a bunch of teenage girls, I went to yeah. a fucking 100 panel. Yeah. But, dude, let me tell you. I'm a fucking segue into a TV conspiracy for a second here. Uh, the Hunter got recommended to me by Lord, uh, the artist friend that came here uh, 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 a while ago. He started drawing the Hunter characters, and he goes, Toby, you really have to watch the show. And I'm like, not really, you know? But so on, like, one of those TV breaks, like, in between seasons, I'm like, you know, it's it's on Netflix. I started watching it. And the first season was okay. It was a little teeny popperish and kind of whatever. But, you know, it held enough interest for me to watch the first season. And uh, even after the first season, I'm like, it's all right. You know, it was entertaining. And, you know, I didn't think much of it. But fucking, hey, the second season blew my fucking mind, man. The second season was so good. So good. 
I absolutely love the show now. Like, I'm so on board with it. It's, it's so well written, and the ideas behind it is really, really cool. Yeah, I heard I heard uh, really good stuff about it. So yeah. It's on my list of stuff to eventually watch. It's, it's short seasons. They're 13, 10, oh, okay. 12 okay. episode seasons. Yeah, they're okay. like, they were like a mid-season replacement, and they kind of just kept it at that size, which yeah. I hope they stick with it. because. And if you like sci-fi, this is kind of like... Lord of the Flies meets sci-fi meets like a little bit of Lost Hoosh, a little bit, right. not quite, but it's it's really, really cool. Cool. Yeah, I highly recommend it. Justice so, League. The, what book oh. is it? Birds of Prey? Birds of Prey. Oh, fuck, I'm so on board in yeah. that. Uh, Justice League, written oh, by oh, Brian Hitch. Toby, are you writing down how much this is going to hurt? <laughs> oh, your wallet. Uh, uh, well, I have to say they, they, that showed those writers write female characters really, really well. It's actually one of the big draws for a lot of uh, the female viewers. Mm. So I think them on Birds of Prey is actually really, really good yeah. fit. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Uh, Justice League, written by Brian Hitch. So uh, long, Jeff John. So uh, it's it's going to come out what? Well, just written by Brian Hitch, not drawn. Yeah. Yeah, uh, drawn. Wait a minute. Did I hear that right? Yeah, <laughs> d- yeah. drawn by Tony Daniel and uh, Fernando Passarin. Tony, uh, Tony Sh- Daniel has flip-flopped a couple of times between writing and mm-hmm. drawing. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's written a few. Yeah, uh, I like his art better than his writing. Uh, <laughs> begins uh, twice monthly starting in June. Uh, there is a Justice League um, of America uh-huh. comic that will have its creative team announced later. There's a lot of people that think it's Jonathan Hickman. That'd be badass. That'd be pretty that'd good. That'd be a big get for Marvel. Even if it's not a permanent like thing, that'd be a big get for Marvel. Even if it's like a 12 issue, like, yeah. oversized thing. But, yeah. but it's Hickman. It's going to be like 50 issues. Yeah. And then... S- speaking of unknown, Super Sons, which yes. is the team up title of yes. Damian Wayne and Jonathan. I'm white so, uh, white I, slash Kent. Which, I'm, I'm semi curious about that. Actually, which this, is, this is the one Dan Didio is most excited for. Well, it's it seems like harken back to the Young Justice days. Right, totally. Like the, not the cartoon, but the old '90s yeah. Young Justice yeah. book. Yeah. Uh, both of those books have no creators announced currently. They will announce them later, and I believe they're really saving some big names for those titles. That's cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm with, looking forward to that one. Actually, the the New Fifty Two Superboy it's never clicked. Uh, the new 52 Teen Titans just never clicked. It's good. So we'll get to Teen Titans in a little bit here, but it's good to see them bringing back some of these more yeah. co- good versions of classic stuff. If if Connell's gone, fine, but Jonathan White well, slash Jonathan Kent the, is the, real the, cool. The new 52 Superman really was a weird version of the Jeff Johns Teen Titans Superboy, which was one of the best Superboys ever written, yeah, I feel like. That. But the new version, yeah, didn't do it justice. Yeah. Uh, I keep it with Justice League. We got Flash, written by Joshua Williamson, with art by um, Carmine. D- D- I'm not even going to try to pronounce this guy's last name. Carmine. Blah, 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 blah. Gian Domicino. Man. Uh, and Neil Gouge doing the kind of flip art. And he's done some okay work in the past. So uh, Joshua Williamson has done some good stuff. He's writing the Haunted Mansion comic right now, which I like. Okay. Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, written by Robert Vendetti, one of the very few creators actually staying on a book with everything's changing. Uh, with art by Ethan Metzgiver and Rafa Sandoval. That's twice a month starting That's in Green July. Lantern Corps? That's Hal Jordan oh, Hal and the Jordan Green Lantern, Lantern Corps. Corps. Because Green Lanterns so, yeah. featuring uh, ah, Jessica it's... Cruz and Buzz. The, the, so these are now the two Earth-based Green Lanterns, both of whom are going to be in Justice League. Yeah. Uh, it's written by Sam Humphreys coming over from Marvel with uh, Robinson Roca and Adrian C.F. And I love Adrian C.F. He's a great, great artist. Uh, I, I'm really excited for that. Sam Humphreys... I really liked his first Star Lord series. This yeah. new one, this year one thing, has not been good. But I can see him taking the star, the stuff he did with Star Lord, and sort of rolling that into a Green Lantern yeah. book. So uh, it looks like we're going to have two Earth Green Lanterns, and I think it's smart to make the Earth Green Lanterns not any of the main guys. No, no, I think they're all going to be on Oa doing yeah, something. I, I think it's it, it's I think it's good having kind of it, it's refreshing. Especially since we've had so many lanterns kind of rotate in and out as, you know, the lanterns of Sector 2814. Yeah. So it's like, it's kind of nice to have new ones like, right, right. take over. So uh, We have, whoops, let's see, we have um, Cyborg coming up here. If I can pull my list back up. There we go. Cyborg, Cyborg written by John um, Semper, who's uh, new to comics. He's mm-hmm. uh, He's worked in animation. Uh, with art by um, God, why is this not opening? Um, Will Conrad and Paul Pelletier. That's twice a month, starting in August. This is the most recent Cyborg series. They're really trying to push the Cyborg. Character. Well, they're gonna push Cyborg forever. Um, I think you keep trying. <laughs> I mean, 
Cyborg is a great character, but I feel he plays best within Titans. the Teen Titans. Yeah. I, th- there's well, not. There's a lot of characters that just don't. Well, the thing have is, is a like, good solo arc. You know, he's gonna have a really cool storyline and the, the direct to, to uh, DVD movie that's coming out, the Justice League of Teen Titans, because yeah. he actually gets along with the Titans more. That's their new take on it. That since he wasn't part of the Titans, that he's just too young for the Justice League, and that he actually feels more at home with the Titans. Hmm. So I thought that was a like, kind of a cool take yeah, on yeah. the new. New cyborg. Well, the thing is, is like um, I remember um, reading in John's uh, run when Forever Evil was going on, and mm-hmm. all the heroes had disappeared, and, and they had kind of reassembled Cyborg, and you kind of got this really in depth look at who he was, and I really enjoyed his New Fifty Two kind of origin um, that was shown to us in in Justice League. Yeah, as part of you know, it's, to the mother box, yeah, and, and all that stuff, and, I, and it, like it's it really it really works. But again, I think Cyborg, like you said, works better with the Teen Titans yeah, versus... Yeah, he's, uh, he's a team character. Yeah. And, and that's not anything against the character. There are a lot of characters that work better as team. It's really hard. A lot of X-Men solo books don't work yeah. because they they're, they were created to work as part of a team. Yeah. And Cyborg was created for that. Robin could stand alone. I feel he was created to stand alone, but he works well in a team environment. You know, Cyborg, Starfire, Raven. I like their solo stories, mm-hmm. but they're best when they're the Titans. Yeah. Aquaman, written by Dan Abnett and Brad Walker, uh, and Jesus Moreno on art. Aquaman's still kicking around as Aquaman, and I yep. think we'll get a big push for that character in the next couple of years with the movie coming. Also by Dan, uh, by Dan Abnett is Titans, drawn by Brett Booth, who I'm... Yeah. I, well, I don't care about Brett Booth, but actually, he's fine. They're, his he's people fine. are skinny. Yeah. yeah, but but I'm excited about the book, though. Good t- good cast. Yeah, uh, Nightwing, Don Troy. Yeah. Uh, is it Aqualad? Isn't it? I believe or or Tempest, whatever they're gonna call oh, him. Oh, it's not the uh, the 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 one from the Unjustice cartoon, is it though? The mm. son of Black Manta. I I, like I don't know what they're, I, I don't know I, what I like they're doing. I like that a lot, a lot actually. But no, I'm really, really excited for this book. This kind of want to. Yeah. There's a, quite a few things I've been missing out of the new Fifty Two, and a lot of the stuff is coming in Rebirth. So I'm, I'm really excited yeah. for this. Yeah, they got some good. Yeah, it's um, and it, I, I, it looks like a take on Red Hour Arrow or something. I'm not exactly 100 percent sure. Is who it not the character's supposed to be? I don't know who it is. It doesn't look like Arsenal. I don't think they really named who some of these characters were because a lot of his like concept art. Yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, it's Aqualad. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it looks like a new Tempest new Aqualad. Yeah, it looks like a new take on um on uh what's her, on what's his face on Red Arrow because he's got like the blind like kind of like a like a domino mask type type thing. I'm pretty sure it was Arsenal. And then uh, is that Arsenal? Yeah. Yeah. It's Arsenal. just it's just a very different look for Arsenal. No, that's that's goggles. Okay, is that all it is? Yeah. And then I've, I don't know who this. I don't know who the girl with the with the green is. I don't know, I don't know who that's supposed to be. Maybe a new. Um... Uh, maybe it's uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Oliver Queen's stepsister. Oh, um, I- 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it could I mean, be, but she's she's a kid. I don't think they would make her. It's rebirth, though. They can change the age well, if they want to. Well, no, they can't. Let's get this out of the way because I was talking to Toby about this myself, and I think a lot of people. Our perception of Rebirth is completely wrong. Rebirth is 100% the continuation of New 52. Okay. Nothing has changed. <laughs> but let me rephrase that. There are, there are, they are taking, they're not rebooting anything. They're not bringing anything back. They are, they are changing the world to have some classic elements New take. happen. Uh, you know right? how hard I'm fighting saying word right now. It's, it's not because it's not. <laughs> New 52 was a hard reboot. Yeah, this is. Continuing the new fifty, the new fifty two existed. It's happened, we're, but elements are changing to match older stories. They're not necessarily bringing back older mm. concepts, right? They're not bringing back old stories. They're just changing new stuff to better match the old stuff. But so, I mean, it, it, with it, Superman it, being the exception, with yeah. this literally is going to be, as far as we know, the pre, uh, yeah. the the, the pre Flashpoint Superman. But I mean, it, it. I. I wouldn't. It, I mean, even if they wanted to put her in as as the Green Arrow character in that book, I think would work fine. Yeah, I mean, I think she's. Yeah, I, I think she's a little young, but but yeah. Damien's pretty young. Well, Damien's still a kid. I mean, Damien's the leader of the New Teen Titans, and he is. He's absolutely a kid. Yeah. Uh, and and Wally is now just full on Kid Flash, which mm-hmm. I like. So, uh, Green Arrow written That's by Black Wally, though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, with that, which right. is fine. I think it gives them a better identity. You were right. They're not so they're they're sticking with the stuff that they've changed, but but they're they're kind of not beating around the bush well, or like, changing stuff yeah. just to change it. It's like, well, it's 
the yeah. characters you kind of know, just a little different. I mean, th- this is what we talked about a little pre podcast. Is um, I, I I don't mind th- if things are new, right? Uh, but I just kind of somewhat knowledge of classic stories, even if they're updated version of the classic stories, right? So I mean, there's there's reasons why these classic stories were so good and so mu- so beloved. So that you know, I I you know, a lot of history you want back, even if it's a a newer take on the classic stuff. If that well, makes I, sense, yeah. I I still feel we're gonna get. The acknowledgement of certain stories. Yeah, that's all I want. Right. right, right I mean, right. That, that works for me because right. I really don't need all the BS stories in between. No. The, or the couple of years of runs by, a, no disrespect, but a bad writer or a bad artist. The Teen Titans. Well, yeah. the, the things like the Teen Titans existed with this very first team formed today. No, that does not work. Yeah. That does not work for the characters you've set up because that, that completely ruins relationships that have worked for 20, 30, 40 years or more in some cases. So things like that need to go. They, they need to have the elements but update stories. Yeah. So. Uh, Green Arrow, written by Ben Percy, who I believe is... is he? An arrow is starting yeah, to he's, look more uh, classic Ollie. Well, well Percy's, the, Percy's, he's, 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 writing right he's, he's writing it right now. He's writing it right now, and it's, it's great. Um, and he's going to be meeting Black Canary for the Yay. first time. So, again, like I said, some return mm, to classic things forms. back in order. Yeah. Uh, art by Otto Schmidt and Juan Feria. That's twice a month starting in June. Harley Quinn, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda yep. Connor. Hell yeah. With art by Ch- uh, Chad Harden, who's and that's, great art. That's getting a new number one? Yep, yep. Okay. And John Timms starts in August. So what's going to happen is in May, there's still going to, or in, in June, there's still going to be other, so like Suicide Squad and Cyborg and Dr. Fate. These books are still going to be on their old numbering while the new ones are coming out. So there's not going to be like two DC comics a week. They're going to slowly have the new Ooh. stuff start and then the old stuff finishes out as it goes through. Yeah. Suicide Squad, man, if it's broke, fix it. Uh, written by Rob Williams, who's been doing some great work. Art by Jim Lee and Philip Tam, twice oh, a month yeah. starting in uh, August. And the team might sound a little familiar. Killer Croc, Harley Quinn, Katana, Deadshot, and Rick Flag. Hmm. hmm. I wonder where I heard that one before. Hmm. Uh, and you can preview this by picking up the Harley Quinn and the Suicide Squad one-shot that came out this week. Yeah. So, art with, by, art Jim by Jim Lee. Lee. So DC realizes, how do we get a Suicide Squad book to sell the most ever? Oh, just get Jim Lee to try it. <laughs> Jim Lee drawing Harley Quinn? I'll take a thousand. So... Yeah, this is a no-brainer for DC. How they've well, had Squad just flounder for the last five years. Well, the thing is, is a Squad started out so strong with the yeah. New 52. Adam Glass's run on that book established it was one of the top books from the uh, New 52. It was all. It was. It was good. It needed to have been the best, it, and it, it wasn't. Well, and the thing is, is and I, it, it really hasn't been. And, since. and I think the problem with that is, is you get. The crossover fatigue because it started to flounder once we hit that death of the death of the family, right? Like, well, it floundered when they changed creative themes nineteen times in eighteen yeah, yeah. issues. Well, yeah, it was stupid. But you know, Adam Glass's run was really solid on that book. Yeah. Um. But uh, what was I going to say about? Um. But I think that what's hilarious is Harley Quinn twenty five twenty six that just came out. Um. She gets a makeover, yeah. and the line in it says, "Oh, it's very cinematic." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Yeah. Or cinematic. <laughs> the, the 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 way they're kind of just transitioning Harley into They're making it fun. The the movie Harley is they're just making it fun. They're having a good time with it. Yeah, it's, man. it's not like it's like she can do whatever she wants. Yeah, you know, yeah. all these people that are like, Oh, your costume change, all this stuff, you're just making it it's natural. Yeah. yeah. So Well, Margot actually admitted that she tried on the uh, classic. No, oh, I saw costume. that, yeah. Yeah. So they actually gave it a shot. It, that would not work on screen. No, no, no. way. No. I, I, people probably just wanted to dress up. Yeah, why <laughs> not work and put yeah. that on? Those, those those pictures will get leaked on on the on the Blu-ray. Red Hood and the Outlaws, uh, another creator coming back, Scott Lobdell. You know, uh, it's yeah. I, I don't know. He's all right. Uh, Dexter Soy is the artist. Uh, I am very curious about the team though. It's Red Hood, mm-hmm. Artemis, and Bizarro. Which Artemis? Ar- the Amazon Artemis. Okay. Yeah. So this is. A dark trinity, if you will. Huh. Yeah. Evil Batman, evil Superman, evil Wonder Woman, kind of. So yeah, I'm interested in the take. The first Red Hood, bo- Red Hood book was good for a while, and then just real bad, real bad by the end. I read the and, first... and you know what's sad is it, it started to really, really tank during the Ra's al Ghul stuff, yeah. and it felt so bad for Charlie because he was buying it going, Ugh. It was bad. And I got one or two issues into the new series, and I just stopped. So, I mean, we'll see. Uh, Deathstroke, here comes one of Toby's 
picks of the, Ooh, the year. The big return of Christopher Priest. The entire internet, my Twitter feed was like, what the, what the, Christopher Priest? <laughs> Christopher Priest, who's been a longtime comic writer, Quantum and Woody, one of my favorite comics of all time. Uh, Black Panther, he was an editor for a while. Uh, actually, man, I he love was editor writing, for a long man. time. Great writer, hasn't done a lot in the last. Yeah, where has he 10. been? Nobody knows, right? He did a he did a Quantum and Woody miniseries for Valiant, and that's it. I mean, I yeah, he's probably doing something else, right? I have no idea what he's he probably, doing. He probably had kids. Dude, no, he's an older guy. Yeah. Um, I really, really, really loved his writing. Yeah. Like, really loved his writing. Like, when I saw his name, it's one of those, I just pick up the book. I don't it, care what it is. If you want, if you're going to watch the Black Panther movie when it comes out, like, you're all going to, you have to read the Christopher Priest run because that's what it's based on. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, what? What? Hand motions? Sherlock, Sherlock's buddy. That's who, he's, uh, that's who he's playing in, in Black Panther. He's playing Black Panther's sidekick. That's Who? the guy. What the hell is the guy actor's name? I can't remember the hell the guy's name. I'm sure everyone's yelling at the me. The one that's playing Black Panther? Yeah, it's sure, uh, fucking Doctor Strange's sidekick Boswell? in Sherlock. What the hell is the guy's name, the actor's name? I forget his fucking name. Oh, oh the Samwise? No. Or not Samwise. Uh, Doesn't even matter. Frodo? Yes, Frodo. No. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, what? oh what's no. his face? I know who you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> the guy from Fargo. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, shit. Uh, you can look it up while I move to the next book, but we're very excited. But, for but no, no, before we go, Christopher Priest. Yes. Fucking hey, I was so yeah. happy. I think I texted you like five times. You're like, shut up already, Toby. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited. Uh, yeah. And I think Deathstroke is a really good fit for him, too. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, art by a lot of people. Carlo um, Pagulian, I- Igor Vittorino, and Philip Watanabe. I don't, or Felipe Watanabe. I don't know any of these artists, but it's Christopher Priest. It doesn't yeah. matter who's drawing it. It, yeah. it should be really I'm good. I'm super excited. Uh, Batman Beyond by Dan Jurgensen and Bernard Chang. That's monthly starting in October. Mm. Uh, Terry McGinnis is coming back, so yay, get for that. Uh, and that's kind of the same thing that's doing right now. One of ones I'm looking forward to the most here: uh, Blue Beetle by Keith Giffen and Scott Collins. It is Jaime Reyes mm-hmm. with his mentor Ted ah, Kord. Yeah. That's the way you do it. That's that's how the way you, you do, do it. it. Yep, yep. That's how. Ah, oh, yes. Look, look. See, Jaime that's Reyes. The stuff is, I like. Jaime Reyes. Perfectly fine character. Yeah. No problem with him. Yeah. I like him. Ted Cord is what top ten of all time. Like for you. For me. For me. You you're 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 you can't you're gonna have a hard sell with people like me with Jaime Reyes as the main character. I read his entire solo book. The yeah. new fifty two book was shit, but I yeah. read the entire solo previous book. It was fine. Yeah. But it's not the Blue Beetle that yeah, I care yeah, yeah. about, right? But well, you add in the classic element by having Ted right. Gordon. Uh, well, yeah. you can't, That's how you smart. do it. Yep. You can't fit that Blue Beetle in with Booster Gold. No, no, like no. They, you can't take Jaime Reyes and make him the blue no. part and of Blue al- and Gold. This allows them to to have Ted Cord go off and do his own thing. I, I'm so wishful so. thinking of a Batgirls book with Cassie, Steph, and, and, uh, and, and uh, Barbara. All of them. Oh, a Bat Girls title? Bat yeah. Girls with an S, yeah. yeah. Well, they they did Spider Women. Yeah, they could. Uh, here's one I know Brock's going to be excited by Hellblazer, written by Simon Oliver. Uh, art by, um, again, I can never I never know if I'm pronouncing this guy's name right, uh, Moritat, who, um, or Mor- Morit- Moritai. He's the artist on uh, All-Star Western. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very nice. Which, I, which it fits. Awesome. Yeah, awesome art fit. for, for Hellblazer. Yeah. Totally, totally good. Uh, Teen Titans by Ben Percy, drawn by uh, John Boy Mayers. That's in October, and that's Damian leading Teen Titans, and there's a real cool team there. the preview of the uh, the, the directed TV uh, movie coming up. Yep, yep. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it. Yeah, Super Sons and Justice League America. That, that's everything that was announced. So Where's, uh, where's Red Robin? In the Batman book? Uh, so Red Robin is is basically, he's it's it's Tim Drake, Robin suit, Bow staff, yeah. everything, two R's on the chest. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Sure, he's Red Robin. He's in his classic costume. Just because just, the Red Robin costume is stupid. I don't like the new Fifty Two costume. At no, all. that one's silly. I like the one before though. It was fine. Oh, it's fine. But yeah, let's go to this is '90s Tim Drake <laughs> costume. Just two R's yeah. instead of one. Perfect. <laughs> Whoever came up with that, give that person a raise. That is perfect. <laughs> but he's in the Batman book, right? He's uh, not with the Titans. Uh, he's in Detective Comics. Uh-huh. He's in, uh, and I don't believe he's in Titans. No, but he's he's in Detective yeah. Comics. Detective Comics is a team up book. So it's um, it's Batman, Robin, uh, Spoiler, 
uh, 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 Cassie? Cass- Cassidy. Really? Black, Black Bat. Well, what are they calling her now? She has some orphan. dumb orphan. orphan. Yeah. And then Clayface for some reason, which is weird. Like, But we'll find out what's up with that soon. Ah, that will be my favorite well, book of all time. That seems to be detective spawning out of it, Batman and Robin Eternal. Well, yeah, a lot of the stuff is 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 kind of coming from these events, yeah. then moving forward to rebirth. It's not like a weird hard reset on a lot of these titles. Again, Titans, um, Lois and Clark, the super uh, super league crossover that starts this week in the Superman titles. Those are all direct tie-ins and lead-ins to Rebirth. So if you're not reading those books, you probably should because they're gonna, especially Titans Hunt, is directly lead, leading into it. So yeah. You should definitely read those titles. Dude, if you're not. I am. I'm scared for my wallet because at least <laughs> half of those books, I'm like, I'm well, fucking, okay, I'm, and they ship. In. Well, they well, ship twice a month, but but yeah. every book is two ninety nine. That's nice. So, I, and but this is the also thing is this list is not. This is all coming out in end of May, June. This is staggered over June, July, August. So some books are even slated for September, October. Yep. Yep. So you can you can be like, oh, I'm going to check out these. As your older books fade off, and then be like, "Oh, let me check this one out." Oh, I don't like this one anymore. So it's like you can balance it a little bit more. Yeah, and you're gonna have uh, stuff will replace certain titles. Yes. New miniseries will start. I've already heard of at least one, uh, or well, I've already heard of at least two, I guess. Yeah. Um, so there's there's a lot more that will be coming as yeah. part of this. I am super excited for this. Yeah, super excited. I like New Fifty Two when they announced, I'm like, "What? Why?" And I was kind of like, you know, kind of, kind of iffy about it. I checked out some books and I tried to be excited about yeah. it, but this, I'm like, I, I just felt like, you know, stuff was missing, and they realize it now. Things are back. I hope so. I really hope so. I hope so too, because they otherwise s- I drop it after number two. I'm kidding. <laughs> they signed a lot of these creators to exclusive contracts. Good. Uh, you know, DC needs to learn those lessons from New Fifty Two. They yeah. they made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I will not be able to go to the DC retailer meeting. It's in a couple. It's in like a week and a half or something stupid. Oh, it? Yeah, it's on a Monday as well. Why like, can't what? you go? Honeymoon. I, no, well, it, it was so notice? it was so short notice, and it's on a Monday, which is yeah, like, oh, that's Wait, terrible. Is it next Monday? It might be. If it's next Monday, you can go. No, I, I physically cannot go. Why? Um. Because it's next Monday, or like the Monday after. It's really soon. It's way too soon. Because I'm on spring break next week, so it's, that's what I was No, saying. no, no, no. It's way too soon for me to be able to go. I, I have no time to plan. Plane tickets are too expensive. So, And it's a Monday. Like, that's Come on, man. Let's roll down Sunday night. Oh, jeez. But we we'll um, be back on Tuesday? But... Uh, so pick up books. I we'll be really... back on Tuesday like at midnight. So so we go no. down Sunday night. We stay somewhere. We do the day. And then when it's over, we drive back. We'll be back at 1 a.m. No. Come on, man. No, it doesn't even end until like 8 or 9 at night or something. Okay, then we'll be back at 3 a.m. <laughs> and then I have to be up at 7 a.m. to pick up the comics. <laughs> so, but if it's next week, I'm off. No, it's not next week. So uh, I really hope DC learns some of the lessons from New 52. Mm-hmm. And if any of the stuff we heard right prior to Rebirth is true, they haven't, and that they still have no idea what they're doing, they're still flailing around with editors, that there's no stability, people are getting yanked off books left and right. That said, time will tell. I am excited for a lot of these books. I still like a lot of the DC Comics. I just wish they could go a week without doing something dumb. But I am really excited for a lot of rebirth titles. Don't let that don't let the potential for editorial problems stop you from being excited. Hey, editorial, a, get your heads out of your asses. Yeah, stop well, fucking there's, shit up. There's a lot to be excited with rebirth. So we shall see. And uh there's a lot of very, very good um promotion stuff that they're gonna do around it. So uh So go to commerceconspiracy dot biz. Yep. Check out the pre order list. It's up there. And you can for get, June. get it going for what you want to check out, what you want to get. Yep. And uh, and if you don't want anything, or you want to buy it from your local shop or digitally or whatever, definitely check them out when they come out. Toby, yeah, uh, you want to talk about Walking Dead? Yeah. So we're we're pretty much spoilers here. We're gonna do Walking Dead, and then we're gonna do some Batman v Superman talk with Toby. Okay. So if you don't want to be spoiled about anything, you should check out now probably. Uh, if you are okay with spoilers, we're gonna keep going here with some Walking Dead spoiler. Uh, Brock, you not you, you know what? You watch it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, Walking Dead. Let's talk about the season finale, season six yeah. finale. Again, goodbye, everyone that don't want to hear about Walking Dead spoilers. Bye, guys. But you've probably already heard them. So, 
So, Mr. Higgins. The internet hated this episode. I hated Mr. Higgins on this episode. I thought it was the greatest episode this of all episode time. Was I was really awesome. annoyed by Higgins by setting me up on this one. I didn't set you up. Oh, so, you know, for a while there, Ryan has been really good about, you know, when I text him, he texts me back, you know, somehow, some way through the last few months, I'm not as important anymore. What? He just doesn't text me back anymore. I always text you back. No, what are you talking no, about? No, no, So, you know, no, so all that's... of a sudden, Sunday night, Higgins texts me back because I wish him happy birthday, but like maybe like, you know, nine hours later than I texted him. Oh, that's okay. And, I, I didn't even do it till yesterday on Twitter. Yeah. I so, was like gone half the day. Yeah, you know, you know, text is just right there on your body and you could see it right away, but you know, it's <laughs> okay, you know, if I'm not as important, it's okay if you didn't get me into the DC thing, you know, it's all right. <laughs> but, but, so Ryan goes like, did you watch it yet? I'm like, no, no, I have to wait till the next day because I watch it on the phone. And, and, and you're like, holy shit, blah, blah, everybody's pissed and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, fuck, do I need to watch this now? Because I usually, it comes up for me at, at about 3 a.m., right? So, and I've done it once and really paid for it the next day, uh, you know, by, by having... Not a whole lot of energy the next you, day. You just had a really I'm, bad case I, on Mondays. I, I, I am no longer um, 20-something. So, uh, but, but, so I'm like, shit, man. Maybe I have to watch this like at 3 a.m. And I'm so fucking happy I did not. I would have been pissed off. I was like, man, something big must happen. Something big must happen. So when I finally watched it Monday night, I'm like, wait, this is why everybody's so pissed off about? What the fuck happened? Oh, people are hate it. So if, if you haven't... If you're not familiar with what happens in the episode, I'll tell you right now. Uh, there's a big battle in Walking Dead named Negan, mm-hmm. who they introduce in this episode. Also the leader of the losers. Uh, was that the same guy? Yeah. yeah. He's he, also the comedian. Well, yeah, he's a comedian. And he's Batman's also dad. Batman's and dad. And Batman's dad, yeah. yeah. Uh, but he, I, he also wore a pink thing. Was he? What's that? He's also been in a couple romantic comedies. I'm sure. Um. Well, yeah, I mean, these guys are on all... Uh, yeah. Didn't uh, even paycheck. Uh, yeah. Je- yeah. Jeffrey Dean Wait, Morgan. how do you know that? That's the better question. Because I was trying to Google a uh, Negan yeah, gift. Sure, sure, a sure. A Negan gift. Sure. Or I, I think I, we know about your um, movie choices there, buddy. Yeah, the actor, uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He looks a lot smaller than when he was a comedian. I mean, he looks big. He's, but, thin, yeah. he's thinned down a little bit when he was, for this. But he was a comedian. He was huge. huge. Yeah, he, was, yeah. he was even kind of bigger on The Losers. Was he? Yeah, I, never saw, I still never saw that. I need to what watch that. What's wrong with you? Yeah. It's got fucking Captain America in the movie. It's got fucking Idris Elba in the movie. It's got Zoe Zaldana in the movie. Yeah, I don't know why I haven't seen it. I need to watch it. And it's based on a fucking DC property, know, Mr. I, DC motherfucker. I know. It's not I Marvel. Vertigo. It's okay for you to watch it, buddy. <laughs> it's Vertigo. Yeah, it's Vertigo. Did you ever watch that Human Target TV show? No. My, I watched, I my I watched father-in-law ten, liked it. I think I watched 10 minutes of the pilot. I couldn't stand it. I watched a couple episodes, and I was it just did not click with no, me. No, I watched, I think, 10 minutes. And I think Plus, that's right when The Losers came out was around that same time. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. It has nothing there. to do with the fucking Losers. No, I know. I'm just like, it's a vertigo thing that just didn't... What What? What did The Losers wrong during that time was all those movies that are like Soldiery, Mercenary yeah. came out at the same time. It was Expendables. Didn't 18, 18 come, yeah. And Losers all at the same right. time. Of course, Stallone was fucking 80s... Entourage of names kind of won the battle on that one because I think 18 definitely deserved a sequel, which it didn't, uh, which it didn't get. Uh, it didn't make the money. And Losers, I think, was a really nice little gem. A lot of fun, a lot of you know comedy and action. Good thing to watch. Uh, yeah, I heard good things about it. So yeah, it's on the list one day. Uh, but Walking Dead. So yeah, they introduced Negan, and in Walking Dead, in Walking Dead issue 100, 100 yes. uh, Negan kills a character. If you don't know who that character is or you don't want to know, stop the podcast right now because that character is Glenn, mm-hmm. who is a long-running – I mean, since I – mean, I mean, the comics, like, basically, the first like second issue, like, right? I like how you stop the podcast and you didn't really pause real long. It's Pause Glenn. it right now. <laughs> yeah. It's Glenn. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you haven't been spoiled by this point. If, yeah. you were, if you weren't spoiled by the season of Walking Dead, every article about this show tells you that <laughs> Negan kills Glenn. Well, the, they foreshadow it. Oh yeah! In the beginning of this, but, well, in the, wait, well, no, in last season. Do you still think it's Glenn? Well, hold on, hold on. Because I it, never fought for the, once. It's Glenn in the, the TV show. The random person watching the show would have no idea what they that they were because they were not actually foreshadowing anything. They, well, they, they weren't necessarily foreshadowing that, but they if, were foreshadowing things. If you that were, were a comic book fan it. and you've read Walking Dead, you would kind of be like. Huh? Oh, oh, that's interesting. But the random person off the street yeah, would have yeah. no that yeah. didn't mean anything, right? So why is Glenn holding a bat? Yeah. Why is Glenn looking at the pictures of people's heads bashed in? <laughs> so we have 
this, you know, we think, oh, it's going to be Glenn. Of course, the theory is, oh, they're going to flip it, and it's going to be someone else. Maggie. It's going to be Maggie. That's I, my fe- That's been my theory since, like, before the scene. This started. whole season, or sorry, this whole scene where they introduced Negan, I was like, oh, they're going to kill Eugene. They're totally going to kill Eugene. That they he's, they set Eugene up in the last couple episodes as being more yeah. confident. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna go yeah. out and do this for the team. I'm I gonna- have to say, after watching it, I think it's Eugene too. But originally, before watching anything, yeah. I was thinking Maggie. I, th- I thought Maggie as well. Yeah. Uh, because you know, you, you change it by it's someone similar to the, as closer to the character, right? But make it more dramatic. You kill his woman, then he could do a whole bunch of stuff with Dark Land. Right. Right. So you have Dark Dark Glenn. Glenn. Yeah. That, this girl that's goatee. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna be all <laughs> evil, like mopey. He's gonna be like Ryan Higgins listening <laughs> to like clean music. Like they're like makes him want to cut himself. Some and a then, lot of Morrison. Then he's gonna go uh, go kill some people. So we have <laughs> the what must be one of the most intense. I mean, this is borderline red wedding like intense. Oh, it it was more intense than a red wedding. But then. But here's the you thing. You don't think the bathtub scene was more intense when they were just slicing people's throats and they kept talking and went back to slicing people's throats when they were at the uh, the cannibals? But you knew they weren't going to kill. Yeah, but they're actually they're dead when they Yeah. Them, like, uh, that's an intense scene, but this is Negan. Someone yeah, is yeah. we know what happens here. Yeah, yeah. Someone is not coming out alive. Yeah. And so he picks his person and beats them to death with uh, with Lucille with his bat. Well, we and we see it from a first but person perspective. That, but that's what I was going to say. We don't actually know who it is. The viewer, the cameraman, is beaten to death <laughs> by Negan, but they don't actually tell you or yeah. show you who it is. Now, there's, you can you can assume there's a few people. You can assume it's not Rick. Yes. And you can assume it's not um. Michelle. Uh, well, no. The only other person I could say you know for a fact that it's not. Is is um Carl because he specifically says if anyone does anything, cut out the kid's other eye. Yeah, yeah. So you have two characters that are that are guaranteed safe there. I feel like people are trying to isolate audio. People yeah, trying to do all this stuff. No, no, no. That. They have there. No one has died. Yeah, no they have not picked a person. They came out and said they haven't even filmed it yet. Right. They haven't done anything. They just had people screaming. I don't yeah. think the actors even know until no, the actors, they come to the work next don't. season and no. go, oh shit. Yeah. Well, someone, I saw a great tweet online that was like, this is the greatest piece of um, a contract negotiation I've ever seen in my entire life. It was a response to, to my tweet. Oh, is it? Yeah, because I tweeted, because uh, I, right when it end, that it ends and Negan's beating and you hear the screaming and it cuts to the, right? Yeah. I just started Busting up laughing. Oh yeah, and every, and my wife was like, "Why are you laughing?" And I'm like, "Because do you realize every single person watching this show is like, what the oh, fuck? No, are... I have to wait until oh no, everyone like, except for me supposedly." Wait, so Toby, you're the one that was like, "That was stupid." Well, no, no you that wasn't stupid. I, I actually expected it. I actually think. We got more than what, well, what you know, me as in Toby expected. I actually thought the season was going to end with him just Negan walking just out, o- opening the door. Yeah. Hi, I'm Negan, yeah. and boom, credits. Yeah. I actually, we got a lot further than I thought we were going to get. So I was like, but that's yeah. the that's issue one hundred is a lot of setup, and then his whole speech, and then he kills him. And so the fact okay, that they so cut it's, it, it's it's yeah. kind of matching. Well, to that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's is, word for word in it, some of the. Well, and that's the thing it. is, is it's not word for word because. It, in a lot of it. In a lot of it. They did a really good job. Well, he swears. They did a really good job making him say things that are very Negan-esque, but not completely Negan. Because Negan in the comic is... Well, he swears a lot more in the comic. Yeah. Obviously, they can't drop the F-bomb every um, other word. But but, the, uh, but what I but I like how they did this because the setup in the comic for Negan is so long. It takes... Whoa forever for Negan to set up. They basically and, set him up the entire season. No, but the yeah. thing is, is they've already met Negan before this actually happens in the comic. Like, Negan is already, they already know who Negan is. This is, in the comic, it's, it's set, it, it happens a different way. Yeah. Um, they get there a different way. But the, um, in the comic, it took a really long time to set up for Negan. And I think that, that after Negan, after issue 100, we kind of, streamlined out of that into what we're in now but um for uh for what they did for that last scene was just like building up to negan setting it all up they did a great job within the confines of this season and then it's like boom we're yeah, i mean this whole there. like back half of the season has been been them slowly dealing with negan's yeah. people and i love the whole earlier part of the scene where they just keep drive up 
Oh, there's people blocking the road. Let's go yeah. the other way. I drive up. Oh, there's a bunch of zombies and I can't get through yeah. this well, way. No, but everything escalates, right? Oh, like, right. Yeah. Like yeah. the guy, like the first one is nothing goes on. The second <sighs> one well. is, no, like they spray paint the guy and that's it. But it, there, no, there's no guns fired, nothing. In but, the, but the second had they one, rushed them, they would have. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're slowly just yeah. hitting these obstacles, obstacles, obstacles. My favorite part was when they actually run in the woods and they're stop whistling. That was really yeah. creepy. I yeah. thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, it's a brutal. It's, it's a it's a brutal episode. But so look here. Here's what I think. I'm like, for people I expected to find out who it is, I'm like, why? Why would they? I'm like, they they know that you know everybody wants. I mean, that's like makes a really good beginning. And I guarantee you that when we come back in what October, whenever it is, yeah, we won't. We won't even know in the first ten minutes. No. It was. It's gonna be like something else, like a fucking horse. You know, maybe Morgan walking around the woods again, <laughs> like this. This like they did the same thing with Daryl, right? Shoot Daryl. And open up on something completely else, and they won't even reveal it till maybe the, the end, right? So. Right, right, right. Well, and the, but what what does this do? This makes season seven's it's all about Ian. season premiere the highest oh. rated show. So all these people online that say I'm never going to watch this show again, I will bet twenty dollars right now on this podcast to to the invisible person sitting at the end of the table that the series seven premiere will have the highest ratings. Ever for this show, there's because every single person that said they're not going to watch it, they will 100 percent watch it. If you checked out at season two, sure, three, right? There's no, three. I mean, no, I'm two just, is the farm. I mean, no, just three, in, three was the farm. I don't no, care. I'm not farm. saying. I'm not saying anything in general. I'm just saying, or I'm not saying anything specific. I'm just saying if you checked out a long time ago, yeah, yeah. I don't see you coming back. Yeah. But if you watch this episode, you are 100 percent watching the premiere. Yep. You are lying to yourself if you yep. say you're not. And so, and if you've lasted six seasons of this show, yeah. you're not going to stop. No, so. until they kill Daryl. Well, I'm done. I'm out. I'm sorry, <laughs> my man crush. So, who do you think it is? Let's on the record. Who do you think it is right now? I I, I was with Maggie before this all started. I'm still going with Maggie, but I think the theory with uh, what's his face, Eugene. Eugene I, is really close. I I'm I think like Eugene. logically thinking the way they say yeah Eugene. I I feel like. The way the character Negan is moving makes me think not Eugene because Eugene's kind of way down an end, mm-hmm. and I feel like the way they position him in that scene, I don't know. I kind of get the feeling like he's standing in between a few people. So yeah. that's the well, I, I believe. You can't think of that. I no, believe they, Eugene's yeah. down the end. Yeah, but, but, but you can't think of it. That right, way. I'm not yeah, trying they, to. I'm tr- yeah. but Eugene to me, he's an expendable enough character. Yeah, but. They've built him up in the last few episodes. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah. But he wouldn't completely derail the show no. if he died. Now, here's the thing with I Maggie. don't think it's a cop-out, but yeah. I, I feel like it's it's the smart move for the show. And this is why I thought it was originally Maggie, because I feel like she kind of did her deed on the show, and by killing her off, you're going to have a dark glen ages, basically. Yeah. But now that they did the whole possibly zombie in her belly, maybe, uh-huh. or something else in her belly storyline, I'm like, oh, shit, my theory you just gotta play went. play that out. Yeah, I think my theory just went out the window. Yeah, yeah. I, totally, I totally thought it was going to be Maggie. Yeah, so, so. after all that, that, which just happened in the last episode, so I don't think it's no longer Maggie, but I'll just stick with it because that's what I said originally. But but Eugene, maybe. Brock? I don't know. Um, Dark Horse? I want them to... I want him to kill Glenn. I mean, you think it's just Glenn? I'm like, it, well, this is that the thing. That would almost be anticlimactic, though. Yeah. But this is the thing, though, is is like I, I, I've i talked to a couple people about this. So we and, get Dark Maggie instead? And there are people, I'm going to give birth to zombie children yeah. and then kill everybody. There are people that have, have, have gotten into the show and then gone and read the comics and gone ahead in the comics to where the show is. And they're like, if the show doesn't do that, to to them, it's something that, like... It's yes, they already went through it in the comic book that they're just waiting for everybody else to catch up, right? Like a character like Andrea that they took out in what season Early, three? Right? Season three was when she was gone. Yeah, season three because uh, yeah. that was that was the uh, the terminus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. They took her out early. Um, oh no, that was the governor. Sorry, the governor. Yeah, yeah. yeah not terminus, um, they yeah. took her out early, and it was odd because you're like, well, wait. If you read the comic, you know that she's. She's this kind of character, but then you start realizing, oh, this character is not necessarily detrimental to what's going on. Whereas a character like Eugene is detrimental because Eugene actually helps them move forward as a society. In the examples they were showing in the, in the 
show was he's the one that's do, been trying to get the power for the solar stuff. He's the one that's been making working the bullets, on or make, trying or to or trying to get, make the bullets. Get to, yeah, making but you can easily have another character do that though. But that's the thing is, is you can easily introduce another character. But it's if that character's already there, why do I need to introduce? But you know, is it is it worth it to kill that character? And yes, you have to weigh it on. Are majority of people going to be pissed off, or people, more majority of people going to like say, "Oh, I'm never watching the show again." Well, I guess not a lot of Asians watch the show, so maybe you could kill the Asian guy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, of but, course. But it's one of those things where I think that I think that you, it, it's a tough decision for them because they they can do they can veer off however they want, but the source material is so. Is, I, I is still so think solid. it's not Glenn. I really do think it's not Glenn, though. I well, I. I Fair to say, it could be, but you know, it, well, I, I mean, just don't it, think it, is. it it could be a variety of people, but you know, I think that I, for me, I think killing Glenn is the choice you have to take because you kind of get because of how Maggie's character develops, right? If they want to go with developing Maggie's character, that's great because it, they're already setting it up for Maggie to no longer go back to Alexandria, All right? Right? Um, oh, well, she might not make it back. Oh, yeah. Some of these um, people may not. Like, either way, though, if they kill Daryl in that first episode and come back, I'll see you guys. I'm going back to well, Dark Saints. Well, they're not going to kill. They're not going to kill Daryl. That's 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 their that's their. I'll go back to Boondock Saints. Hunky. Yeah. So maybe that's how to make Boondock Saints number three. But see, that's the thing is 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 I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to they're trying to give the audience because I mean, like you said, spoilers. If you don't already know who dies in issue 100, yeah, right. It, I mean, there's. They're trying to give the audience that feeling that you had reading issue 100, right? Because they kind of can't because there's. I mean, it, it's. I mean, they can't. They can't replicate the TV. The, the comic can't replicate the TV show, and the TV show can't replicate the comic. They're so different. Yeah. I, I feel like Walking Dead 100 would have been cheap had you not actually seen who killed them. For me, the ending, uh, the ending on a cliffhanger finale of a show is that's no, fine. It's perfect. That's, that's perfect. Like, it's, yeah, that works. Like, it, and not giving us who they the, killed and, and, and leading us into the next season, yeah. Comic book last page cliffhangers are a reveal yep. that the story will continue. TV show and movie cliffhangers are something that are gen- is generally held back from the audience. Yep. And you feel like both are reasonable ways to get the audience excited for the next episode. But, yeah, with this I feel they made the right choice. All right, Walking Dead. we got a little while till you come back. Well, we got fear next week. Yeah. I liked the first season really? okay. I really well. I first couple episodes kind of eh, as it got later on. I really dug it though. I just don't care about the characters. Oh at all. man, the druggy kid is so good. He's I like, weird. I, I I I hated him the most when I started watching the show, and when yeah. I finished, I loved him the most because he actually makes the most sense. Yeah. But though nobody believes him because he's a drug dog kid. I mean, right, it's right, hilarious. Right, right. I, I mean, I'm I'm curious to see how Fear does. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're taking the aquatic spin on it, which I think is a is an interesting take. So I'm curious to see how that goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Toby. Yeah? Let's hear it, man. My uh, BVS? Batman versus Superman. You didn't get to hear us, or you didn't get to join us for the giant episode last week, but... Uh, so I got 30, 32 minutes from uh, now on? You got you got till you're you're done. Let, <laughs> you saw it a second time. You saw it with us. Yeah. And we talked about this briefly a couple of yeah. weeks back yeah. after we saw the fan premiere. We actually talked a lot, and I wish we recorded it because from the first time to the second time to after the second time, I think there's a lot of drama between us, fun drama. Yeah. But I think we eventually we came to the same conclusions, and we we're like, wait a minute, why are we finding out about this? So I didn't like this part. Well, I didn't like this part. Oh, wait, yeah. it's the same part. Yeah, so it's really funny because we came out to the same conclusion, but you liked the movie and I didn't, So, which is kind of weird. Uh, because we have the same feelings about this movie. Uh, I say, okay, so first of all, I watched it first time with the preview and uh, with you guys, and I remember sitting there going, what the fuck is going on? And and I was actually, this happens rarely for me, and I usually, I, you know, I rewatch movies a lot, actually. I really enjoy w- watching movies, and I rewatch more than I should, probably. Uh but I was thinking about halfway through the movie, I'm like, I'm never gonna rewatch this. Like, I'm not. This is this is this is not what I like, and this is not what I feel like it should. Be, the movie should be, and and you know that's kind of like my thoughts the first time around. And you know I kind of let my feelings be known, 
And then uh, I I kind of let my guard down and watch it the second time and then use my head a whole lot. And I enjoyed <laughs> it, actually, the second time quite a bit. You know, and we talked about that, too. And like, I, yeah, I totally agree. Like, you know, when I stopped thinking about it, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. This is fun. Right? Uh, so I enjoyed it the second time. Um, but, okay, let's, 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 what, should we start with characters? Like, whatever, whatever you want to do. List. I have a little list. I have a little list. Let's, let's go down. <laughs> characters. Characters. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Lex Luthor, right? Main main characters. And maybe Lois Lane. But we can add her in, too. Uh, I, I feel like all the actors did a really good job. Uh, I, you know, there's no hate for Batfleck. Uh, in fact, I was for him after seeing Runner Runner. I was like, fuck, he can oh, be yeah. Bruce Wayne. Uh, um, you know, a little bit on Batman later. Um, Wonder Woman's Fucking amazing! Nah. Like, the best thing about this movie is Wonder Woman. Uh, Lou Ford, different take. I was actually fine with it. You know, um, I, I, it's not my choice. I wouldn't have wanted to do this. I wanted to see it, but with the way they went, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. I don't hate. I mean, not what I would have wanted to see, but you know, I don't hate it. I can understand what they were doing with it. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Superman, I say for last because I feel like they just done him wrong in this movie. See, I, other people have said that. I just don't get I it. Really he do. feels the same. No, I do not think so. Like, I does he feel tacked on? No, it's not that. I just feel they didn't do injustice. I just don't think. I think the things they were building in Man of Steel, and yes, I'm one of those guys that actually enjoyed and liked Man of Steel. I think the stuff they build up in Man of Steel, they tore back down. Like the modernizing Superman mythos. Uh, you know, I just just think like they went two spe- uh, steps backwards, and then and, and I think they went two steps backwards with the plot even. But I'm gonna save that for a little later. So I, while I had no problem with Henry Cavill, I really do think like the story wise didn't give him a lot of play, and I well, feel it's a shame. That, that's true. I agree with that. Well, I, I mean, I had, I had said that I felt that the actors did a good job for what they were given, but it felt like there was something missing. Well, I, I think I think Clark and Superman were missing in this movie, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and more of this later as I go down my little list here. Um, but overall, I mean, I really think all the actors were, you know, doing a good job. Mm-hmm. Lois Lane probably didn't need to be in this movie. Um, but other than that, I was fine with well, it. How, right? else, how else are you going to call Superman over? Mm-hmm. Well, more on that later. Anyways, structure of the movie. First time I watched it was a big WTF going, what the fuck is this thing? I, I, I thoroughly did not. The first, so I'm going to do a lot of first time, second time things. All right? The first time, uh, I, 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 the whole first half, all the vignettes were so disjointed, so disconnected with, with the added dream sequences. I, I just did not like it. Um, now, upon watching the second time, I realized a lot of the things I wanted to see in the movie were actually all there. Just not in the order of things I really wanted them. Like, so you start with the whole, you know, Batman origin, fine, because you have to reintroduce Batman in this universe. Fine. I didn't need that, but totally fine with that them doing that. Then they go into where uh, the, the whole Metropolis being taken down, which I fucking loved. I, I actually personally would have felt like the movie should have started there. Like, start the movie there. Uh, and then after that, they go into that 18-month uh, jump, <coughs> which I feel like was the biggest miss opportunity in, like, superhero movies ever like i wanted to see basically uh the news reports talking about him going is he good is he bad is he god is he you know <coughs> uh, uh, bad, well, you, you know, get some of that yeah yeah but i feel like that was the opportunity to do that i feel like the hearing should have been then it should have not been about superman what they think is killing a couple dudes in the desert <laughs> and then they have this giant thing hearing about it right no i mean, yeah I, I i agree with you toby i think that i think that I, it was a good spot to to showcase the passage of time, basically with, the plot of the yeah. movie. Well, right? hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, we need, we need to correct something here. Nope, I, I think there's a. Ma- I think I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm not okay. going to say people are lazy. I'm not going to say people. Maybe the movie was. Maybe it showed it improperly. I don't know. Yeah, but no one thinks Superman <coughs> killed people in the desert. I don't know why people think this. He no, was, they do think it. No, he was involved in an international terrorist incident, but they don't think he actually killed any of those people. Those people were killed with guns. Like, like they don't think anyone. He was. He just got involved in international affairs. They don't blame him. I thought they blamed no. They him blame the him for being in. They, like he that he's out there. Yeah. They, they blame him for being involved, but the, the fact I don't, of the matter is, is they didn't make it clear whether or not they blame. Well, him either for way, I don't. I don't first involved. of all, I don't like that scene, and I didn't like the setup for that story. <coughs> yeah, there's yeah, that either woman. Way, either way, I don't. I don't like you know. There's yeah. that woman that was talking about them like burning the villages and everything like that, but I I don't know why people thought yeah. So all of that stuff with the news reports that happens like kind of after yeah. I kind of wished a lot of that stuff about morality 
comes right in right right after the the whole basically metropolis down you know yeah. the aftermath i actually basically wanted to see the aftermath yeah. Yeah. Uh, and frankly that they they went with the the desert storyline over the aftermath more so I'm not saying that they didn't go with the aftermath is what really kind of bugged me and i feel like it was a missed opportunity uh, also during the, that time you could have shown like like Slufer building his little uh you know uh research thing up you know uh my problem with like Slu- I'm gonna jump around a little bit here. I'm sorry. Uh, I should have done better notes. Uh, my 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 problem with like Slufer in this movie more so than anything is, uh, I think I don't really and I could be wrong and some people are gonna yell at me. I feel like it's not really clearly shown what he's really about, right? See, he knows about the super super meta people, right? Now, why in the world would Superman and Batman's file not be in the same location? Like, that kind of bothers me. Like, you have these neatly organized with symbols. I don't understand why his symbols are. Wonder Woman, Aquaman, yeah, he, Flash. He came up with the brands, which, just so you know, he trademarked so, Patton you know, and all I, that stuff. I, I felt like it was really bizarre that, like, Superman was not in the same file location. And that was minor shit. You know, who cares? I'm being too nerdy here. But, you know, I and, and what's his purpose, right? You know, I, I kind of wanted him to show, like, hey, he's, like, figuring out Superman. Like, you know, there's that... Lois and Clark episode where he's like testing Superman like different things I'm like I almost wanted to see maybe some of that like, well I, I think what you're talking about is is a problem that I had uh, with Lex was he didn't have drive he didn't have motivation for necessarily what he was doing he had motivation but it wasn't clear but it wasn't clear but the other thing is is he's supposed to be smart but we never really see any of that no be- we see that he figured everything out before the movie starts, he knows who Wonder Woman is, who, who knows who Brett, Bruce Wayne is, he knows who Superman is. Yeah, but the thing is, is he, it's not made exactly clear that he knows this information. No, it is. It's very clear. The, the minute he introduces them, he already knew. He I already know. knew. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. He knows. He knows. But it's not, it's, it's, not made, it's not made clear to you in your first viewing. Maybe in your second viewing, you can see yeah. it more. But I it's not made clear in, in your first viewing. And the thing is, is he doesn't really do anything... Mad scientist, scientific. Oh, he is. No, not on, not really on his own. He cuts off the finger, the the fingerprints for Zod, yeah, and that's it. Yeah, but he figured out how to do that. I, it infuriates We're really nerdy territory. Well, no, again. it infuriates me that people cannot assume anything. That it seems like, well, if I'm not shown directly, it's a, it's then a movie. I, you have to assume everything in a movie. Yeah. They're, they're assuming something is not wrong. We have the we have the seeds of Lex Luthor being this evil mad scientist. What, do you want to waste another twenty minutes of this movie having him like do random shit? No, no I mean, he's I a mad it. scientist. Yeah. You know it, right? You got it. it. Yeah. You could totally and then, right. Like, so the I'm, fact I'm that he knew everything already, right. I got that part too. Yeah. Right. The thing that makes so. me so mad is that people are like, "Oh, I need my hand held during this movie." Yeah, fuck that. And then that. when no. they hold your hand by showing you Batman's. Origin the second time, people are like, I don't want to see Batman's origin. Why are they holding my hand? It's like you can't. Well, I have understand both ways. why they did it, but whatever, right? right. Yeah, but right. what? Yeah, yeah. Um, I so so here here's here's what I would have wanted to see, and you you pointed this out, and during the last podcast, like a lot of people are mad with this movie about not necessarily what's in the movie, but what wasn't in the movie, yeah, and I yeah. fully agree. And I think the first time I was so mad because I was disappointed more than anything because I wanted to see but this. But you, you can't hate a movie for what it's not. No, that's. Fair enough. And again, second time I let my guard down and I was fine with the movie, yeah. right? Uh, Superman vs. Delete, one of my all-time favorite story, 175, right? I, I still, to this day, ever since Superman Returns, I wanted to see the world turn on Superman. I'm like, this, again, was the perfect opportunity for it, and they really didn't go down that avenue, right? I half wanted the Superman going, fuck it, if you guys don't want me to save you guys, I'll just leave. And he goes to this Antarctica thing, and the dude says, shows up, and go, oh, where's Superman? And he goes, well, you guys didn't want me. Well, I think you get a little bit of that. You, yeah. you, he does leave, right? Yeah. I mean... You you get uh, Ma Kent saying, you know, but I, this that, world to me to me that was like the beef the beef as in the, the yeah. thing of the story that was missing. Like that's the that's the main part I have. Uh, you know, Superman to me, I have a soft spot for him. But, but like, isn't that what the whole news reports were about? Yeah, but there's shit just kind of glossed over. That was like five minutes versus like you know the, forty minutes the, of fucking the, Batman. In the hearings? Yeah, but that was like you know ten minutes versus forty minutes of fucking Batman. But this is a Batman movie, right? But, uh, <laughs> you know, I I just feel like there, you know. WB didn't do but, Superman justice. That's okay, my thing, okay, right? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, you, you know, Superman to me is, I always will have a soft spot for him. He's the first superhero movie or superhero that, you know, made me fall in love with his whole nerd kingdom and, you know, turn, made me turn into kind of person I am now because Christopher Reeve's Superman, right? So 
to me, I, I really feel bad when they didn't do him justice. Uh, but going back to like Slufer, like I wish we could have seen his st- structure more. Like, why did he make Superman fight Batman? Like, why? Like, you know, to me, like the whole Doomsday, you know, little hands of Doomsday is fucking great. So, to me, the perfect like Slufer in this storyline would have been he figured everything out, right? As in all the the meta humans in this world, and then it goes into the ship and then finds about Doomsday. I kind of wish we could have seen like fucking a switch from kind of loony Lex to fucking bonkers Lex. As in, he goes like, holy shit. Not only do we have these metahumans on this earth that we can't control, there's this fucking crazy dude that's all powerful in, in space that, you know, I can't defeat, right? That that he kind of loses his mind about, uh, at that point, about that. That kind of, you know, I wanted to see the switch a little. But, you know, he's just kind of went cuckoo in the end. Um, also, why did he build Doomsday? Is it to defeat Darkseid? Is it to, like, you know... If I could defeat Superman, then I could defeat this motherfucker in space. You know, which to me at that point would make a far more interesting character because he's then not, in his mind not a really a bad guy at that point, right? Well, with his creation of Doomsday, again, you come down to the assumption that if he can create him, he's not an idiot. He knows how to stop him. Doomsday Fine. was the backup plan for if Superman didn't well, kill Batman he, or he didn't Superman. Do, he didn't. He didn't do Doomsday. The Kryptonian ship told him how to do it. Right, but he cre- he makes it. The Kryptonian ship wouldn't do it on its own. Lex Lex broke into the ship, took over control of it, and made the ship created against the ship's will, by the yeah. way. Yeah. So, I mean, Lex created this thing, and he created it specifically to stop Superman, Wonder Woman, and these other people. Could he actively control— is it, but, but, is, but what, what, why, right? Is it to prove a point? I mean, he is hates. It, is it? Is it, well? Why does he hate them? You get this from the very beginning of the movie when he's for when or the early. He just doesn't like super beings that can well, like be all powerful. He doesn't like anyone in control. His his father, the military, the government, superheroes—they're all the same thing to him. Yeah, which I think should have been done clearer. But you know, I'm not the filmmaker. But you know, uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, I'm trying to think here. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that's kind of. And, oh, the other big issue I have, like with his storyline of pitting Superman versus Batman, I, like I thought it was unnecessary. There's is complete. I mean, you already established how much Batman hates Superman in this movie. You really didn't need to have him like send little fake letters to 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 Bruce Wayne. And this must be like the dumbest Bruce Wayne we ever had in like cinema history. Go like, oh, oh, you know, you know these letters are not real. I'm gonna just fucking believe them and hate Superman even more. Right, so that bugged me a lot. Like the world's greatest detective got swindled by a couple of check letters. Like really? Well, so I will give you that. Like Bruce Wayne's Batman is smarter than that, and you call him the goat, the greatest Batman of all time. But really? he, but but, but I, I, the way I feel like this scene is presented, yes, it's maybe not presented the best it could have been. But and it's quite possible it's not even like Luthor because there's rumors that. Joker and and the Riddler were almost in the movie. Well, so here's here's how I yes kind of interpret these events. Here, you have Bruce Wayne yes who actively is angry with Superman and because of his powers. Good which is, right, which is, right, right, to right, me, right, that's right, good right, enough. You right. don't need like Sluver like hey, hey so look, you, I pulled the fucking realize, strings. Realize though that Bruce doesn't see any of these letters until the very until basically yeah the the tipping point right yeah so. Whether Lex Luthor kind of it works either way. Whether Lex was slowly sending him these letters and he was like, "Oh, okay, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm getting madder about this as time goes on because one of my employees was injured." But in this movie, he's already at this point of like, "Fucking Superman, we have to stop him. This he's going to destroy the world. Yeah. Look what happened." And and by getting those letters, that's the tipping point. That I, if if I'm remembering correctly, the next scene he's in the armor ready to fight Superman, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think to me that's well, just because he sees the explosion at the Senate, and he's like, "Holy shit! What yeah. did Superman do?" You know, no one's exactly sure what's well, happened. Yeah, that's the other failed opportunity. And right? then he gets in the those news letters. reports right after they actually say, "Oh, it was in the wheelchair." Right. right, which actually kind of bothered me. I was like, that was another one where they like the world could have blamed Superman for, it. and they kind of were they, hinting they, at uh, that too. Again, like the thing in um, and uh, plus he asks about the checks. Why? Why did that person not get my checks? Yeah, when he sees him rolling up in a brand new wheelchair, why does he think he's not getting money? His money at that point. Uh 
He's not poor when he sees him on TV. No. He asks, like, why hasn't this person been getting the money that I've been sending him when he's rolling in a nice suit and a brand new wheelchair? That's a little weird, too. Oh, I think that, I mean, I don't. Does he think, like, oh, I never didn't give him that much money for him to afford that, so he must be getting money elsewhere? I don't know. Didn't he see him when he was uh, spray painting the Superman statue? Yeah, yeah. (sighs) Yeah, he saw him because he wasn't, he was in. Shitty wheelchair and all that stuff. Yeah, I think he was just looking into him, well, and then they he gets found arrested, and then and Lex and then Luthor he, brings him out. And Lex Luthor brings him out, but the thing is, is yeah, while he's at the, the while when he's he at gets this... that letter, he sees him on TV, and he goes, "Why hasn't he gotten my money?" Yeah, but I, I I think again, I think there's a scene where they're because it's he's an employee of 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 Bruce Wayne or yeah. a former employee of Bruce Wayne's. Yeah, I just I, and he yells out, "I work for Bruce Wayne." Again, maybe just Wayne. assuming here, but it, it feels like he was just getting. Info on this guy. What has he been up to? Oh, what? Wait, these checks. You know, like I, I don't well, think like he. Yeah, and I, it's possible. I, I mean, I it's a long movie. It's possible. Maybe I missed the scene. Well, there. okay. The the thing though is 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 that Superman had already told Batman at this. Or, yeah, Superman had already told Batman at this point to cease and desist what he was doing, and he said, if you turn this signal on, it's going to be trouble. And the thing is, is he goes and turns the signal on, but then we have how many goddamn minutes of Superman talking to Lex before Superman's supposed to go over and. To, like, how long was Batman standing there in the rain waiting for Superman? Well, I kind of like that because he was setting up what he was doing to Superman. Like, in true Batman fashion, he picked a location where he's going to find him. He 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 exactly was calculated. Like, if I do this and this this, this is where I get Superman. This is where I want him. Yeah, I thought that was actually really. But the well thing done. is, is he already knows what's going to happen. But he turns the light on and he sits there. And then we're waiting for Superman to have the conversation with Lex and find and save Lois again. This All is this my stuff. whole problem with because the two of them should have been fighting even without Lex's involvement. And that's the thing is they are already heading towards that. Yeah, like yeah, but Lex is the pushing. You know, Lex is the tipping. But that's point. the thing is is they were are but but Lex like, doesn't need to be the tipping point. In order, one. Batman would fight Superman, but I don't think Superman would have gone as kind of maybe as crazy as he did had Lex not kidnapped his mom. I understand the complaints that people have where they yeah. said Superman should have hovered there and just explained the entire situation. I understand this point. Well, here's my other problem. Superman can find fucking Lois Lane in the fucking desert, but he can't find his own mom? We ha- did. You- I had this conversation okay. on, on the podcast. Oh, my, I might have missed it. Sorry. Again, I think you have to disconnect yourself a little bit because we wouldn't have a movie called Batman v Superman. We would have a movie called... And I think that's one of his plots, to be Superman honest with you. Superman constant... yelling at yeah. Batman from 50 feet in the air explaining Lex Luthor's villainous plot, right? That's yeah, not the name yeah, of the movie. Well, but, yeah, but, that's, so, and I think that's one of the flaws in this movie, calling it Batman v sure. Superman and concentrating and trying to market it so much on there that well, they, I think they kind of like kind of kept hour, themselves into that. It's two hours of setup for the Batman v Superman side to fight. The Batman Superman fights 10 minutes and then they form the Justice League, right? So yeah. I mean, I I don't disagree with that. Yeah, I think um, by by putting Superman, you you immediately threaten Lois, and then kidnapping his mom. He's he's very disorganized at this point. He's already very untrusting of people. He knows Batman's going to fight him. He's not. I I can rationalize a yeah. lot of this with Superman. Now, why didn't he go save his mom? For exactly the reason why they tell you in the course of the movie or within the thing. Lex doesn't know where the guy is. Nobody knows. If anyone comes to him, now again, there is only one problem with this, is that why didn't they just immediately kill her when Batman burst in the door, right? Yeah. I will accept that as a... a, As a A technical malfunction. As a technical... As a a flaw. However, it wasn't Superman that burst in. If it was Superman, she would have died instantaneously. Now, maybe he could have saved her. Maybe he could have got to her in time. Maybe not. Does he risk it? He's got this very big fight in Metropolis. And again, Superman takes humanity over his own mother. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it, once again, a reason I have no problem with the portrayal of Superman in this movie. I, yeah. I, I, I feel... Well, and it, it, gives, it gives Batman the ability to save Martha. Well, it, it's, it says, I will... If you... You have to save the greater good. Trust me. We Batman acknowledges that he, he's been duped. I need to do this. I can do it. And you and can I like go save scene. the world. I oh, like and that it's scene. Great. Yeah, I love that scene. I, look, on a lot, I feel like there was a lot of really, really good ideas in this movie. Yeah. 
And I just feel like we didn't get the whole movie. And it's funny because early on we argued, you always argued that they should take shit out. And I was like, no, you're so wrong. There needs to be way more shit in the movie. And I think over the course of going back and forth with you a lot, I, I sort of agree with you. If they take a little out, then we get the Batman v Superman movie. They put more shit in, then we get Batman v Superman movie and the Dawn of Justice movie. Right, right, so right. I feel like there's two halves of the movie in here that... Both of them didn't live up to, to their potential, sadly. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. It could have been a better movie. I will say that, despite yeah, me liking and, and it. And I'm really, 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 really looking forward to the extended edition at this point. I mean, like, that's like a calendar I'm marking my, you know, a, a date I'm marking my calendar. Um, anyways, uh, basically, you know, first time, really disappointed. Second time, you know, hey, guys, if you guys want to see a movie with Batman beating the shit out of Superman, you yeah, know, this movie is for you. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of really good hints in there with Darkseid in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I could have done the movie without the flash forward dreams or future dreams, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call them. In fact, I think the flash scene should have been like, uh, you know, after the credits teaser. That would have yeah, done a lot yeah, better yeah. for me. Uh, if they're really going in this direction, this Justice League universal space adventure you know, that's crazy. You know, I just didn't expect that. But it'd be cool if they go there. And it seems like they are. Uh, I just, like, felt like some of the stuff came too a little too soon. Uh, personally, I would have loved seeing Aquaman in, like, the crowd, like, in the hearing. I kind of wanted to see him in the background, kind of, yeah. like, you know, hovering, watching. Sort of the same way they kind of set up uh, a Wonder Woman in the movie. And Brock... I don't think Wonder Woman is in the movie just to get her file. It's the fact that Lex Luthor already figured everything out and she's trying to recover uh, her identity in the movie. So to me, the whole Wonder Woman thing is actually playing right into Lex's whole bigger storyline. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would have loved seeing Wakuman kind of being pissed about the world engine, destroying his fucking ocean, and then kind of just like hovering and watching humans, you know, kind of like in the hearings, he just kind of shows up. Uh, when when Lois Lane is finally in the water at I, the end. I 100% oh, like, thought Aquaman yeah, was going to show up in that scene. I was sitting there going, Aquaman, Aquaman, yeah. Aquaman, right? I'm like, fucking A, he didn't show up, right? Uh, that would have been my Dawn of Justice kind of more movie there. Um, again, man, just like so much... For four years of waiting, I, I guess I expected more. Maybe I shouldn't have. Uh, let's just say they definitely tried to go fucking for it. So I'm, I'm for that too. Uh, you know. Well, uh, let's think of it this too. Yeah. Suicide Squad's in a couple months. I'm fucking so waiting for that movie. Wonder Woman is less than a year, a little I'm over a year. More so even waiting for that movie now because they set her up really well. Yeah. Justice League is like a year and a half from now. I'm like part one. one. Yeah. Like. We don't have these long waits anymore. No, we're gonna get these Fast and Furious. So I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I'm hoping that. And David Ayer is such a good fit for Suicide yeah. Squad. I'm actually really against them. The rumors about them reshooting and to make it funny. Keep talking. I have to get something. Uh, yeah. While you were. Well, I'm so against it because I'm like, you know, let David Ayer has ha- have his vision of the movie. Like, stop, stop going into it just because you know people are complaining about Superman and Batman. Please just let David Arrow just finish his movie and just let it complete. There's no reason to come in and mess things up. Um, anyways, last couple of thoughts on Superman, Batman. Wonder Woman's theme, uh, the music I really liked. Uh, and then we hear it every time she's on screen. Even when she's in there, only briefly you get the guitars a little bit in the background. I thought that was awesome. Oh, dude, that was... No, but even the first time she turned her head, it was like it's just a little chime of it. I was like, that's fucking awesome. Um, yeah, so all in all, I was disappointed the first time. The more I think about the movie, I, I get pissed off. I feel like they didn't do Superman justice. Uh, but I liked the, that they've taken up on the challenge of making this giant epic movie. Uh, I am curious of where he's headed. Uh, the second time I'll watch it, it was a lot more enjoyable and a lot more entertaining. Uh, the Batman scene uh, when he says Marfa was quite fucking cool. Uh, Batman did a, a, you know, Batfleck did a good job. You know, Wonder Woman's fucking awesome. So I'm like on both centers like the more i think about it the more i fucking hate it i'm angry uh the less i think about it and just enjoy it for what it is is fucking cool so you know everybody just go watch it so we have more superhero movies because i'm i'm all for these movies and we're just in the lucky time to get all this shit now so it's too bad i'm old i wish i was 20 you just reminded me i, I was trying to find it while you were talking um yeah. uh it's killing me here because i can't the killing find joke it. Well, no, that's not you know. Right. It's oh, funny. I actually wanted to talk so much more about this movie, and I, I'm not remembering any, everything anymore. Uh, but <laughs> but your, your your brain is is blocking it out. But you know, you know, go enjoy the movie. For the people who like it, I I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm like enjoy the movie and yeah. have fun. And for the people that are kind of you know are thinking like I am, then you know, 
Well, it is what it is, right? Yep. I mean, there's so much different. But the ideas were all there. Do, That's why I'm so mad. Do you think the 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 hate that they have is really worth? Look, I, I actually think some of the Man of Steel hate played into this, right? Yeah. And I feel like some of the plot lines in this movie was a little kind of old school, yeah. 60s, 70s, like, hey, hey, I'm the villain. I plotted these two giants against each other. So in a way, I feel like a lot of the, the, the things to make him modernizing it, the, the new Superman, I really felt like they, they went two steps back. But they tried so much stuff in this movie. And I feel like to make it all work, you need another 45 minutes and have like a four-hour movie, and I'd yeah. be totally down with that. Yep, yep. You know, or do make two full movies. So yep. either way, I'm like, you know, partly disappointed, partly really happy and amazed by it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the extended one. And I really do think they cut out, you know, in that uh, 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 Dark Seed uh, flash forward dream. Mm -hmm. I do think Batgirl's in the scene. I, yeah, I seriously see her. When I saw it the second time, yeah. he's holding yeah, someone's holding hand. hand. Yeah. And you actually see her face at one point. I really do think the Superman soldiers are actually shooting at her. And yeah. that's why Batman turns around and goes, no! So I'm really, really looking forward to the extended version of this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Snyder might have tried too much. Maybe WB added too much. Who knows? Right, Fucking right, nobody right. knows, right? right. Um, do you want Zack Snyder to continue? Look, i be honest. I was never a Zack Snyder fan to begin with. I liked the zombie movie. I liked 300, and after that, I kind of didn't care for him too much anymore. Making action movies is an art form, and, you know, some people like it, what he does, and some people don't. Uh, I feel like with Band of Steel, when they announced Zack Snyder was doing it, I was very against it. I didn't watch the movie, and I, I really, really dug it, and I liked the new ideas they did. With this movie... And I don't know if it's him or not, right? With this, I feel like he doesn't understand the characters, really. Like, the fact that Batman's showing up image-wise with guns, even though he doesn't use them as guns, the fact that we see him so many times with guns mm. was kind of weird to me. Yeah. Like, I know I understand he's not using the guns to kill people, but just the imagery of it. So uh, part of me feels like he doesn't under truly understands these characters. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's it, Nolan's Batman used guns, but we knew what those guns were. Yeah, like, but it was it, so it, clear. But he wasn't... Hey. He wasn't pulling but it out see, and having like, it all the time. Here, here's my thing. Nolan's Batman, like especially the second one, they were bigger than Batman movies. They were like yeah. the ideas behind it were bigger. And I kind of, that's what I want with this. I feel like, you know, if they'd done a, 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 a rock solid movie, then this would have been if the they, biggest if, if, movie if of they had all a, time. If they would have had a Nolan a Nolan no, I mean, molded, I, I, no, no. If they had yeah. had a Nolan I, molded story, but necessarily Zack well, Snyder. Nolan was, you know, a producer action. in this. You know, it's. The action is action, you know. The, the I, I want a more plot, more storyline, and that's why I keep saying when I was fighting with Ryan originally, I want like another forty-five minutes in here to make it all work. You know, personally, I would have done a little bit different order, but I think forty-five minutes will make this movie completely different and very, very watchable. Well, I agree with you. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I love the Nolan stuff because they were bigger than Batman, bigger than you know, they they should have won Oscars to me. They just happened to have Batman in the movie, yeah. right? They were, they were a movie that you could show to anybody unless they already have pre-Batman hate, which is too bad for them. But, you know, it's a movie that well, I Schumacher can... did a really good job establishing that. <laughs> nah, fuck that. Um, you know, like, like to me, this movie, it's the grandma test, right? To me, a really, really good movie yeah. you should be able to show to anybody. Yeah. And if I take this movie to show it to a grandma, she'd be like... I don't know what the nah. fuck is happening. There's just a bunch of fucking images, a bunch of fucking hoopla, and people in costumes and shit is happening. No offense to the movie. I'm just saying that's what a grandma would think of a movie, right? You show her a Nolan Batman movie, she understands from beginning to end. She understands the emotions behind the characters, and I feel like that's what was missing in this movie, which I really do think with another 45 minutes, it would really work. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I I said my piece. I'm, like, done talking about yeah, this yeah. movie. You found, you found the thing you were looking for. I do want to um, clarify. Uh, uh, hopefully, put the room, put to bed some of these rumors about the Suicide is this, Squad it's reshoots. Just a rumor? It's a fucking stupid internet. So, shit. Um, uh, what's his name? Dave, David Freese? Uh Huh? David No, no uh, the 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 guy that first dropped this rumor. Right. I have no idea. Who he um, is. he's he he he's one of these you know, entertainment bloggers okay, whatever, or whatever. Yeah, um, some, some, were you no. gonna say scumbag? Uh, I don't. I don't think I don't think he's a scumbag. Maybe he is. I have no idea. But um, so 
uh, this guy, um, oops, let me go back and pull it up here. Uh, all these rumors came out of them redoing Suicide Squad, adding in tens of millions of dollars, yeah, reshooting yeah, yeah. a bunch Which of stuff. Which was, like, bizarre to me. I'm like... Be- reshooting a bunch of stuff because, oh, they didn't, it's not funny enough, they need to make it funny, it's yeah. all backlash from Batman v Superman. Did anybody, has right. anybody seen the trailers? Well, so are what? and 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 this guy, uh, this guy said, "Oh, it's just, uh, it's just because um, you know the trailer uh, had all the funny scenes in it, right?" The, oh, this, I this is, yeah, the, yeah. this is the rumor, right? Yeah, yeah. It's um, but to me, it seems yeah, like De- Devin, Devin, I, Devin now, is now the guy's I know name. you're the classic ghost fan, and you want someone with fucking pie shit. But to me, Suicide no. Squad should be a dark movie, right? So here's the thing. Uh, one of the makeup guys, one of the makeup and special effects and costume guys, for, sure. Um, uh, Games Reeves FX on Twitter. Uh, he's worked. On, he's working on Suicide Squad. Cool. Uh, came out and said the story is 100 percent bullshit. Yes, Thank the reshoots you. were already planned due to the actor who's playing Killer Croc. He okay. Had, um, he uh, in, so GI Joe motherfucker from Lost. Yeah. In other tweets, he had to say like, oh, he was. He had another job, so we had to go back. These reshoots it was, it was, were already it was planned. Scheduling Wait, what's his name? Complex. I can't remember. The, I can't remember. Uh, how I, I just butchered it. it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Every movie has reshoots. Yeah. Yeah. Every single movie ever made has mo- ninety eight percent of movies ever made have reshoots, right? After after production, uh, sometimes yeah. For for big movies, they yeah. always do yeah. pickups. They're 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 always, the, pro- right? the production always allows for time to do reshoots. Yeah, yeah, if they need to. So these reshoots were already scheduled. Um, there was some interviews with uh, some of the people from the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them being Ike uh, Barinholtz, mm-hmm. who's one of the actors. Who post the Comic Con trailer, the original one, not the second yeah. trailer, yeah, the yeah. original trailer was yeah. like that was a really cool trailer. I mean, I'll, I don't have the direct quote here, sure, sure. but he said I don't, that was a really good trailer. Yeah, but it's a real dark trailer. The movie's actually really funny. There's oh. a lot of comedy in it. Um, okay. one, one of the quotes here is Will Smith is a very funny guy. Jai Courtney is actually very funny. Margot Robbie is really funny. So I think there's going to be some moments that actually make people laugh. And that and, and there's a continuation of this where he's saying that you yeah. know this is there's. This trailer, not that it wasn't indicative of the film, it was just a show in the dark side. Yeah, David well, Ayer's the the, the the first trailer was establishing that 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 we're looking at villains, we're not looking at heroes, and it was giving us it was establishing that that's what we were looking at, right? We're taking the worst of the worst. I mean, it, Amanda Waller says it. I I put him in a hole and threw away the hole. Yeah, right. They um they had some uh, uh talk. I believe it was even David Ayer's that um. That at one point had said, "Oh, um, uh, you know, that first trailer was the dark one. Now we're going to have, you know, a comedic trailer that's which more, they did. That's more like the tone of the movie, yeah, right? Which they did, right. yeah. So well, all you have to do is look at how they did the logos. I mean, DC Comics with the the K instead of the C, right? It was all colorful yeah, I, and bright and stuff. Th- there is no way on earth that 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 months before the movie they're going to completely." change no. the yeah. movie. There's, there's no way. So yeah. all the pe- so here's the thing. People hate about movie Superman. People hate this stuff. They're going to hate this. They're going to they're going to jump at the one piece of news that they read yeah, that that, that verifies yep. their opinion yep. Yep. and be like, "Oh, yeah. DC's yeah. fucking yep. up again." Right? Yep. And that's right, just not the too case. bad. That's too bad. That's it's too bad. That's the world we're in. Yep. Going and, uh, back to uh, Of course no one is reporting uh these remarks. Yeah. So Going back to Batman Superman, though, I yeah. do say I did like Man of Steel better than BVS. Okay, just I because I... because of the character stuff, and that, that's I mean, I always might... that's always what I like better in movies, anyways. Well, I actually probably agree. At the end of the day, I think Batman v Superman is a more cohesive film, start to finish. I feel it flows better. Uh, I mean, the last hour of Batman and Superman is amazing, mm-hmm. but but Man of Steel is just I, I feel a better movie. Yeah, um, I doesn't mean I don't like uh, Batman v nope. Superman. I love Batman v Superman. I'm just saying if but... you're gonna pit the two. Against each other, Man of Steel is a yeah. better movie to yeah, me. I would agree. But again, I'm waiting for those extra 45 minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's half half an hour, thir- 35 or something like that. So well, I want no, it's 45. Like three hours. I'm and... just going to demand it. Man. <laughs> I'm just gonna demand it's like, it. is it three hours and? How I mean, I, I, no, well, two thirty three is the runtime of the 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 actual one. So yeah, I, I almost this got a half an hour anyways. You did. Uh, you did. Thank you. Yeah, and it is time for us to wrap up. We've been going on for way, way, way too long. So I am uh, July. That Batman v Superman um, extended cut comes out. I'm really hoping they actually put it in the theater. That'd be really good. That'd be cool. I'd be in. They just passed th- uh, 700 million. So no, within... you, know what the, you know what they should do? They should do. Uh, they should release it in the theater. And for those that go to like the special showing, yeah. you get to see Suicide Squad right after. Uh, I, I do that. 
Um, Six it, hours, five it, hours. It's yeah. past. Um, it's past uh, uh, seven hundred million. I believe thirteen days into its run, it beat out Man of Steel. Uh, it will. It should end up in the top twenty five or so highest grossing movies of all time. But you know, it's a total and utter failure. It's it's a horrible piece of shit movie that everybody hates. Um, of course, I'm being kind of facetious here because I hate the extremes that everything everything must be. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, guess what? All those X Men movies you loved, yeah, Deadpool's beating them all. Deadpool yeah. is now the highest grossing X Men movie, yeah. one of the highest grossing comic book movies of all well, to time. Me, to me, Deadpool is the second or third best X Men movie. Yeah. See, you could say, "Oh my God, look, Deadpool beat a Batman vs Superman movie." Yeah, Deadpool's beaten just about everything. Oh, yeah, Deadpool is a very special movie, and it was made for like twenty million dollars. Yeah, I, not two hundred million. Yeah. Fifty-six, I believe, was the production budget. Okay, but I'm, I'm not two hundred and fifty million. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. you know what I was trying to. Deadpool say. Deadpool is very special. Deadpool is not even Guardians did what Deadpool did. Uh, that De- you can't compare Deadpool to anything. But Deadpool's I, beaten almost. Every, it's beaten. That's great. Every I'm, I'm, like, almost every Marvel movie. I, Mm. And, you know, as much as I, you know, I'm not a Deadpool fan, I'm so fucking happy for Ryan and the last thing yeah, that yeah, I can't yeah, say. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, for a guy that's been fighting for this movie for 11 fucking years, yeah. for him to win like this, I'm like, fuck yeah. yeah I'm yeah, just yeah. like, fuck yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah, so yeah. happy for yeah. him. Yep, yep. They're, they're going to make an Oscar category just for this movie. Just for Deadpool. I'd, I'd be fine with it. Well, we have... A whole crap and a half a lot of people to thank because it's Patreon time, as Patreon you know. Patreon.com slash Comic Conspiracy. You mm-hmm. can go and donate a little bit of money to us. We're more than happy to promote your product online, yeah. uh, whatever you want. And um, for all our for all our uh, sort of mid-tier and high-tier backers, we'd like to thank them at least once a month. Yay. So I'm going to go through this list. Albert Soy. Let's get the big guys out of the way. Our good friend Albert Soy. Hey, Albert. Uh, who, if you listen to the Geek Box, which I hosted this last week because Ryan Scott was out, um, you got to hear Albert Soy through the wonderful Mitomo app, Nintendo's first yeah. mobile app, compare me to Sheldon from Big Bang Theory <laughs> via his Mitomo voice. And so, so how how mad and irate and red did you turn it? I'm just moment? not going to promote Albert Soy's app Plant <laughs> Everywhere, which is on iTunes now. I'm just not going to promote it because you know, you know, Albert's I'm, a big fat jerk. I, I'm building this Lego city on top of my bookshelf. <laughs> And I'm going to build Comic Conspiracy into that city. Nice. And I'm totally buying the Big Bang set because I need the Sheldon figure to become Ryan Higgins. I hate you for the comic book store. so That's much. Good, totally. I hate you so he much. He holds a Green so Lantern much. lantern. Yeah. He has a flash shirt. Yeah. I'm going to be the biggest Marvel fan now because of Big Bang <laughs> Oh, That's Bryce how, will love you then. Yeah, I yeah. turned you. Jody Lawson, he's got that anthology canon. Make sure you check that out at triadcomicsstudios.com. John Nesmith, Drinking with Batman podcast. Drinkingwithbatman.libson.com. Peter Blanco has got his uh, uh, show on YouTube, Nerd It Up. He produces that, so go check that out. Um, Julian Titus, Nerds With All Pants podcast. No pants. No pants. Never pants. Make sure you listen to that. Pixelbit.com. Joshua Redding, he's got a podcast called Tangent Break. He's got a couple of novels on Amazon. Yeah. You can buy these there. Yeah. Twilight of Ages, Dawn of Darkness. He just went to Disneyland. Uh, Joshua? Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah. yeah. I didn't see that. Uh, Disney World. Disney oh, Disney World. World. Oh, yeah. One of okay. the two. Cool, I'm cool, not cool. sure. Yeah. Nice. I just saw pictures. Nice. Albert Soy is also at Disneyland right is now. Is he? Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. He was hanging out with Kylo Ren earlier today. Oh, so that was pretty good. His yeah. kids st- sit in line on their phones. I got yeah. my date like, with Ray tonight. I... Oh, Blue Ray. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Happy, Happy Force Awakens release, release day. day. Yeah. Yep. Well, physical release day. It came out digitally on April 1st. Yep. Mario Miranda, the Mild Fuzz podcast. MildFuzz.org. Oh, April Fool's joke. No, it came out digitally <laughs> on the first. Yeah. yeah, people were like, really? Oh, okay. Uh, on YouTube. Why are mild... our sales of this so low today? Yeah. On YouTube, Mild Fuzz. And then we had some new people join us up. I'm still waiting to see what they want to promote, <laughs> but I'm more than happy to. Manoa Place, you know him, Sam, Shea, Robert, um, Genum, DeGenum. I'm probably pronouncing you your name horribly. You just need to email let him know. and let him know how to, how to say your name. And Scott Dryman, make sure you guys uh, thank those guys. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Now, give us the, the, are those... Ones we can pimp stuff. They are. Well, give us something to pimp. Yep. Let us know what you guys want to hear. Let me ask. Uh, let me also thank all our good friends. All right, here. Drum roll. Brrr, Mark Long, Edward Moreno, Kevin Nguyen, Blake, <laughs> Blake Etheridge. I just trip all over my words. Yeah, I'm not sure to say this. Right. Christopher Stone, Wesley Thawne, Mike Campbell, David Safar, Red Hat. Red Hat Man. Red Hat. Christopher Noyes, who uh, is getting ah. married actually next weekend. Is he really? He yeah. is. Yep. Oh, yeah. He's Congrats, having a man. Star Wars theme yep. wedding. Chris and Alia. 
Uh, Eric Kovacs, Alex McHale, Joel Jimenez, Armando Tostani, Ivan Leskanik, Chris P- uh, Paliki, Pal- Palake, I believe. If, Palake. I, I believe I mispronounced that once or twice. He, t- he told me how to fix that. Well, Aaron he's Wright. related to Adrian Palicki. Maybe. Ooh. Jason Thomas, Ocularis. Um, I wonder if he's going to get the Oculus Rift. Michael, uh, sorry, Matthew Schnapp, Santiago Mendez, Paul Schultz, Sloan, Peter Parker. I heard he's got a movie coming out soon. Father Dante, Don Kilson, John G, and Dennis Jansen. Thank you guys all very, Thank very you, much. We appreciate it. We appreciate all your monies. And uh, don't forget, there's all sorts of places you can talk to us and, 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 and hit us up. Interact uh, with us. Interact with us. This episode, all our previous episodes, available at comicconspiracypodcast.com. That's 254 episodes. Yeah, 255. Uh, or 254 previous. So I, it's funny. I About mentioned this to Ryan. 17 of them good. I thought at 260 <laughs> is when we get our five-year anniversary. Then Ryan corrected me. Oh, Ryan corrected me. Last week was our five-year five year anniversary. anniversary. Yeah. 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 I, I compl- we did the Batman for Superman part, and I, I actually meant to mention this at the beginning <laughs> of the episode and yeah. completely forgot. And you meant to mention it today. And then I meant to mention it today and also <laughs> completely forgot. So, yes, uh, last week is the five-year anniversary of this podcast. So thank you very much thank if you've you. survived this long. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to still stick to the 260 for our five-year. Okay. True five-year. Okay, but, yeah. We missed a few weeks here and there. But, yeah, um, but yeah. I'm, I'm going to stick with the 260 for a five-year. But we're getting that. good to know that. We well, the five years ago is when you and I started the podcast. Yeah, yeah. and didn't yeah. We want sat me. down and recorded an episode that never aired. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we had to re-record yeah. the first episode. No, last week was no. Last week was the episode that the first episode went up. I think it was March 28th. Oh, yeah. 2011. Yeah. So right before they announced. Uh, no, but we had to record it twice. Remember? Well, we recorded the week prior, yeah. so it would have been one week earlier than that, yeah. 21st. So. But no, 28th is when it starts. Geekbox.net and iTunes, of course. You can find us on there. Rate and review us, please. Always helps. The Comic Conspiracy at Geekbox.net or that contact form. Make sure you send us a uh, message on there if you want to hear it on the podcast. I asked for questions. We didn't have time because we talked about all sorts of stuff. Sorry, my fault. No, it's fine. That patreon.com slash comic conspiracy. Again, you can go and donate a little money to us. Keeps the lights on and keeps the podcast juice running. Digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. It's where you can go to find all your digital comic books. There, I don't know what happened to the link on the site to the actual sale page because they redid the format of, of Comicsology. Yeah, they, I think they do it a lot. It's When you're on the main page, it's slash comic. I believe it's comic dash sale or comics dash sale i don't think there's actually a direct link to the sale page you can get to the individual sale pages yeah but the actual major sale oh, they page, took the tab off i don't know the, it's the, not the there button yeah it's gone oh, that's weird so i i assume that will be back but that, for yeah, now because that that it, that made it easy to just kind of click what's on sale okay good I, it's still the link still works that i have oh, okay. but it just isn't on the front page mm-hmm. so um you know always check out our sales lots of lots of you guys reading digitally Spurbrock.com, that's Brock's blog and pull list and video pull list. Make sure you check that gonna, stuff out. I'm gonna get caught up two weeks. I didn't do it last week because there's really nothing much last week that came out. No. I'm like it would have been like this week's huge. Two minutes. So I'm like, I'll, I'll tack it on to this week. This week's huge. Infinite Long Box Podcast and Wanderers in the Fourth Dimension. Those are Charlie's two podcasts. I'm sure he doesn't he does those ones, not this one, I guess. I don't know. No, check he's him gonna out come back want. from Emerald City Comic Con. Oh yeah, he's gonna talk Emerald City next yeah. week, so you should hear yeah. from that. That's a good con. Is that this when is that this, this, kind this of weekend. Weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but that's a good con. And I think they're associated now with New York Comic Con now. Oh, really? They're getting stronger and bigger. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you know that apparently Silicon Valley has a con in Tokyo? Really? Yeah. I think it's good okay. to Tokyo. It's really strange. Okay. It must be teaming up with a different con than uh, Supercon slash Big Loudon. I don't know. Huh. Uh, my wonderful wife, Leanne, she's got her Etsy shop, etsy.com slash shop slash Leanne Hill Art. Check that out. She'd do a Supergirl. That's her most recent piece. You can check that up uh, on there. Ryan one Higgins, of, Ryan. One of these days, I'm going to pin my sister's Etsy's page, Me too. Me on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. What's her page? I think it's Anita Monster, but I'm not entirely sure. I'll check. <laughs> she makes little monster plushies. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. On Twitter, Ryan Higgins, Ryan, Brock Sager, Larson Bryce, that's Bryce, Toby is Toby XI, Charlie's Insanity and Chaos. The store is Comics Con Store. Should we add all I'm of us? I'm still not used to that. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I need to, I, I did, it was really good for, so you're so much more famous than the store itself. You have become bigger than the store, I Ryan guess. Higgins. Well, 
I use the store account to promote a lot of like, um, I mean, the preset, like the pre orders and, to, and sales to, and to, information. To, yeah, to link like uh, previews of upcoming yeah. comics and art. It's and more stuff. for it's the, follow the store for more information. Like, and I like yeah. really hard information for like sales and stuff and, like and that. Follow me to see me post horrible Mitomo photos and yeah. argue I'm with people. Still on the trying internet. to get access to. Geekbox Comedy Button, Good Job Right Now, Talk Podcast, and Manga Monk Nations. Make sure you listen to all those podcasts. Yay. They are on our little network. They're good. They're fun. You should listen to those. Toby, Off we go. Toby, Brock, I think that's it. No, I think we're done. We do, I know. Here we got one thing to do. What's one thing we What do? random comic should they buy tomorrow? Uh, one well, woman by fucking Morrison before Ryan Higgins says it. Technically... We still owe you guys a couple of random picks because we just we didn't have episodes that made it make a lot of sense to do that. So I will definitely give you my random pick for for, for this week of comic books is Grant Morrison and the Anik <laughs> Wonder Woman Earth One hardcover. You absolutely should get this book. You can take the Harley, Toby. What? No. What Harley? The Jim oh, Lee the Harley Jim Lee. Suicide Squad. Jim Lee. I took Wonder Woman. Uh, I guess I'll go. It's Morrison. I get Wonder Woman. (laughs) All right. I go with Harley's April Fools by Jim Lee. Yep. And writers. (laughs) And writers. writers. (laughs) Rob Williams, I think, is writing that, too. Uh, Brock, Suicide Squad Volume 3 trades out. Yeah, Yeah, that one. Yeah, but I don't want to give him that. Uh, Vision. Oh, yeah, Vision. Number six. 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 Yeah, Vision. Oh, no, 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 no. You know what? Go check out Poe Dameron, number one. Yeah, sure. That's Charles my Soul. pick by Charles Soule. Yep. Go yeah. pick up because I think that 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 it, it's good to see a solo character from Force Awakens. Poe Dameron or the cover or the variants that all feature BB-8 and not Poe Dameron. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So because they know what side they're BB-8. Is the they, best. they know those what side droids of. make money, man. Yeah, BB-8 of their bread, the, the butters on. Yeah, I they got know. the little iPhone controlled one the day oh, it did came you? out. You oh, got, got a zero? Yeah, the yeah, day yeah. the day it came out. Yeah, oh, yeah it was so yeah. fucking awesome. Best purchase ever. I still a little to too around. much, but I had to play around with mine more. My dogs did not like it. <laughs> no, really? Are you freaked out by it? Yeah. yeah my, uh, my cat tried to knock its head off. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> animals, <laughs> no animals for me. Just toys on the floor. Well, apparently you can. It. You it, it, you it can now watch Force Awakens with you. I don't know. Like, there's some. I guess they did a software update or something. Cool. Like, it now watches the movie. I don't know. Nice. I, I, I saw it at like a, a news thing about it, but I didn't get a chance to read it. I'll check that out. So. All right, uh, go home, watch Force Awakens on your Blu-ray player, and read some comics. Goodbye, we'll see you guys next week.